Jeff Hollinger and Todd Christensen on the call. This part of South Carolina is called the Upstate, and those in Clemson are up for a Saturday night date with Maryland. We're about an hour away from the encroaching Atlanta suburbs and less than two hours from Charlotte. The rich football history of the school includes everything from Howard's Rock to a national championship, but tonight they take on Maryland. It's Maryland and Clemson from Memorial Stadium at Frank Howard Field. All that straight ahead. Stamps at supermarkets. Stamps by phone. Stamps online. Stamps at ATMs. Along with your local post office, wherever you find this symbol, you'll find stamps. Conveniently located. Brought to you by the United States Postal Service. Dave Logan is single. He goes on many dates. What is it that you do? Uh, I'm a lawyer. I hate lawyers. And he uses his Discover card. Check, please. So far, he's built up a cash back bonus award of over $160. You're kind of boring. Check, please. What do you think this thing's going between us? Because you know my clock's kind of ticking. Check, please. It's money he'll use for an engagement ring someday. So uh, what do you do for a living? Maybe someday soon. I'm a lawyer. Discover Card's new cash back bonus program. Really? Where you get paid for the things you buy anyway. Memorial Stadium at Frank Howard Field in Clemson, South Carolina. Prime time in the upstate. Maryland, one of the hottest teams in America, looking for their ninth win of the season and their eighth straight versus a Clemson team that has lost six in a row to ranked opponents. It's a game of great meaning to both programs. Welcome, everyone. I'm Jeff Hollinger along with Todd Christensen. They call it Death Valley here, and for the last 60 years, Clemson has won 71% of their games, and that makes it only tougher and tougher on this Maryland team tonight. Well, there are a couple of streaks going on right now. Ralph Regan has his team on a run. After starting the season one and two, they have won seven straight. However, the bad news is the reality that they have not won here in Death Valley since 1985. Clemson has been given a huge lift by the freshman redshirt quarterback Charlie Whitehurst, and if that name is familiar, it should be. The son of David, the former Green Bay quarterback and the star at nearby Furman University, which is about 25 minutes up the road. Well, he's led them to two victories over the last two weeks against North Carolina Duke, averaging nearly 350 yards per game passing. However, he will have his work cut out for him this evening against the ranked opponent. Tommy Bowden came here from Tulane in 1998. It is a very active fan base. Todd, they want more than just a few trips to the Humanitarian Bowl. They want something big like beating a ranked team. They haven't done that in quite a while. They haven't done it this year. Essentially, they have beat the teams they're supposed to and lost to the teams they're supposed to. Tommy Bowden wants to break that scheme this evening. Clemson has won the toss, and they defer, so Maryland will get the football first. And we are underway here in South Carolina, and Rich Parson brings the football out. It is a 16-yard return, and Maryland will take over. Let's go to Stacey Pates right now. Thanks, guys. You know, Chris Downs was a huge surprise for Maryland this year. He was a noted special teams guy. His parents actually wanted him to concentrate on academics. He was at the bottom of the depth chart. He talked to coaches, asked for a chance. Bruce Perry goes down with an injury. Now he's the leading rusher with 13 touchdowns. He went from obscurity to an absolute star on the offense. All right, Stacy, from the 30-yard line, it's first and 10 from Maryland. And the give is to Chris Downs, who is nursing a sore ankle in the comeback against North Carolina State last week. This is the 51st meeting between these schools. And if you want to know why Maryland uh, has won seven straight, focus on Scott McBrien. 61% passing uh, completions. Throws a really good deep ball. Chris Downs, however, as was mentioned by Stacy, an absolute star. Gives them some speed at the back. Only 106 yards from 1,000. He could get it this evening. Starting lineups are brought to you by 1-800-CALL-AT&T. On second and seven, it's Downs again. And spinning just short of the 35-yard line. The tackle is by Eric Sampson. The Maryland offensive line, they average 6'5", 305. Todd Weick. The guard, one of the nation's best. He's played guard and center and tight end. And C.J. Brooks also is a very, very good football player. 
Nick Eason is the heart and soul of the defense. Seven sacks coming into this game. He's got a chance to break the record for defensive tackle. Seven and a half by a guy by the name of Nick Price. Pretty good player for the Denver Broncos. Pretty good indeed. From the 34-yard line, shotgun formation. It is third and six. High snap. McBrien firing, and it's incomplete. Good coverage on the wideout along the Maryland sideline. The linebackers rapidly improving with the tandem of Rodney Thomas and John Leake, both among the ACC leaders in tackles, 122 and 121 respectively. John Leake on that last play showed his cover skills as well. Justin Miller, number nine, true freshman, outstanding on the corner with five interceptions for Clemson. Brooks Bunnard is the punter standing at his 19-yard line, and Derek Hamilton is deep for Clemson. And gets the punt away on this rainy night here in South Carolina. And Hamilton with some room. And brought down at about the 33-yard line by the special teams of Maryland. It's a 49-yard punt and an 11-yard return. Charlie Whitehurst is from Chattahoochee High School in the North Atlanta suburb of Duluth, a potential ACC star in the making. 2-0 as a starter. It's his third straight start. He's thrown a school record four TDs in each of the game, and he is uh, very, very special, his leadership included. Hamilton is a guy to look for if you're into total yardage, averaging 10 yards per carry, also with 39 catches, averaging 11 yards per punt return. So it's first and 10 now from the 33-yard line for Clemson. Here is the pitch. And it is to Rambert, tackled by E.J. Henderson, the All-American. Check the offensive line. Clemson's O-line, best game of the season against North Carolina. 46 knockdowns last week. Gary Bird is the leader, veteran of 1,700 plays. And Timmy Sharp, a walk-on, no bio in the football guide but he'll be in there in 2003. Randy Stark's only a sophomore with five sacks, eight tackles for loss coming into this game. So second and seven with the ball at the 36-yard line. Operating out of the shotgun now is Charlie Whitehurst. He's got three wide receivers across the middle. Wide open, first down, catch by Kevin Youngblood. And he is in midfield at an upboard of first down, checking out the linebackers for Maryland. E.J. Henderson, one of America's best football players, a Butkus finalist, 113 tackles. And watch Leon Joe. He is also a terrific football player. Dominique Foxworth is their best cover corner. Four interceptions, and he is leading the ACC in passes defense. Brought to you by 1-800-CALL-AT&T. On first down and hit by the Maryland defense, E.J. Henderson. Speaking of the man, in on his second tackle, and he hits the quarterback for no gain. Whitehurst talked about running into no Henderson earlier. We'll give you a chance to get that bite later on. But Henderson, as you pointed out at the top, one of the great linebackers in America. Six foot two, 250 pounds, 100 plus tackles again for the third straight year. A definite first rounder. So out of the shotgun from the 49 yard line of Clemson. It is second and 10. And the handoff into Maryland territory is Rambert, and he picks up about three yards. Willie Simmons had been the starting quarterback for Clemson, but he had been ineffective, Todd, just hadn't been able to get the offense rolling. And these last two games, Whitehurst really has shown his stuff. He was injured as a senior in high school, recruited initially by North Carolina, but, but really not pursued by a lot of schools in this part of the world. So it's third and seven with the ball at the 48-yard line of Maryland. Shotgun formation again. Seven and firing the ball is tipped. He had a receiver at the 36-yard line, but that ball was tipped by Randy Starks, and he saved a big game by Carson. Starks does a great job because normally as a defensive lineman, you think that he's going to rush, but he's athletic enough to come off the line of scrimmage, get in the hook zone, and get a piece of the ball. Normally you'll see number 57 rushing the passer. In that case, shows his athleticism dropping back into coverage. So each team is three and out on their opening series. Wynn Kopp is the punter, and Steve Suter is the deep man for Maryland standing at his 11-yard line. A high floating spiral. Knocked down to short of the 15-yard line is Steve Suter. It's a 41-yard punt 
and a five-yard return. We are at Clemson, scoreless between the Terrapins and the Tigers. Call, be sure to dial in the center 20 hundred call ATT. Let's show them, gang! Free for you and cheap for them. Watch this. Ladder! Save on every call. Dial 1 800 call ATT for collect calls. I've been driving on hot man's went on the wheel. And the boys in my head. Because my favorite part! What? My favorite What's more fun than a turbo? A turbo with all-wheel drive. When you get it, you get it. The rally-inspired 227 horsepower Subaru WRX. There's something wonderful about a hamburger. It's one of the few things that brings so much joy. Made fresh, hot off the grill, all juicy and delicious with fresh toppings so it tastes great. It lifts your spirits and makes everything okay. That's the kind of hamburger we make. Wendy's Classic Double with Cheese. It's better here. And our pickup window's open till midnight or later, so you can eat great even late. You know the clean feeling the dentist gives you? Now you can get it between visits. Introducing the newest Crest Spin Brush, Spin Brush Pro. It spins and goes up and down. For that dentist clean feeling, satisfaction guarantee. The Crest Spin Brush Pro. Who the man? Yoda Man. When you take home the first perfect clone on DVD. Star Wars Episode 2. Yoda the Man. Own it today on DVD. Has stopped. Finally, it has been raining most of the day here in the upstate, but it has stopped about to kick off, and that certainly is welcome news for a lot of these fans in orange ponchos here in Death Valley. Kind of a chilly night, about 50 degrees here in Clemson, South Carolina. With the ball at the 15-yard line. Play action, firing and completing the catches made by Latrez Harrison, and he has enough for a first down. It is a gain of 19 yards. Well, this is the 51st meeting between the schools, and Clemson has a slight advantage, and Maryland's last win came in Death Valley in 1985. That is a long time ago. And something that Ralph Freach and, and his staff anxiously trying to break tonight. Uh, as everybody can tell you in the ACC, winning here is very, very difficult. From the 34-yard line on first down to give is the Downs, and not much there. He picks up two. It'll bring up second and eight. Nick Eason on the stop. He is the right tackle. It's interesting when you talk about downs, they say Ralph Friedrich points out that he'd never seen an athlete develop so late. Well, I think that that's just, that's disguising the fact that maybe we didn't know what this kid could do. With the ACC Offensive Player of the Year injured, they went to Josh Allen, a freshman, and weren't necessarily sure about this kid. He'd been there long enough. He was a senior, but look what he did. He jumps in. Puts together now over 900 yards in the season and 13 touchdowns. He's a star. Brother is a coach at Pennsylvania. They were victors over Harvard today. Here is McBrien going long, far sideline. And it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Miller, the right quarterback for Clemson. We had talked about at the top of the show about this youngster, this freshman, who is not a starter early on, but made his way into the starting lineup now with his sixth interception on the season. Terrific athlete, the 5'11", 185 pounder. Right there, stride for stride with Scooter Monroe, who is their go-to guy. Got him out in the line, and he looks at exactly the right time, knows where the offensive player is, and actually that's a pretty good catch because Monroe turned into the DB trying to bat it away. At the 34-yard line after the turnover. Out of the shotgun formation. Whitehurst swinging it. And Ty Hill making the grab. And he is taken down at about the 38-yard line by Andrew Smith. It is a gain of three. It'll bring up second and seven. We talked with Whitehurst about what is a difficult throw. And the very throw that he said was that one right there. He needs to lead his receiver. He's not able to do it. He'll picks up three yards, but it was a poor throw on the part of Whitehurst. He threw it behind him. Second and seven. 
receivers right and left. And the play action. Whitehurst wants to go long up top into double coverage, and it's incomplete. Some of the folks here wanted pass interference, but Aries Curry was the target, and Dominic Foxworth and Madhu Williams were on the coverage for the Maryland Terrapins. Look for him later in the game. Maurice Curry is the fastest player on the team, a 10-3-5 sprinter in the 100 meters. He goes to the post, but it's a good job by Williams, who isn't quite sure where he is, so he looks back and does a great job. Curry wasn't going to get the ball anyway, but that was clever on the part of Williams to look back and make sure that Curry didn't get it. So here's third down from the 37. Needs to get to the 44-yard line. Whitehurst across the middle and too much. Derek Hamilton was trying to make a grab reaching across, but he couldn't come up with the football, and that'll bring up fourth down. Some pressure from Randy Starks on the quarterback. Whitehurst looks off. This is a good job by the quarterback looking one way and going the other, but this is the price you pay for being the star quarterback. Starks not in coverage that time. Instead, he is right on top of number six. He needed to take a little bit off that ball because he had his receiver settling down in the zone. Wynn Kopp with his second punt. First one was a 40-yarder. He gets it away. So pretty stout pressure on him. Steve Suter is deep. And Suter will take the football. Trying to take it to the far side of the field. Looking for a corner. Look out. And run out of bounds by Ty Hill, the speedster working on special teams for Clemson. It's a 43-yard punt and a 14-yard return by Suter. Suter is so courageous, he absolutely refuses to go with the fair catch. This punt is nearly blocked, coming from the side. There he is laying out. That's number 15 for Maryland. He wasn't able to get it. That's Williams. I've been driving on hot man's wet on the wheel. There's a voice in my Here head. Here comes my favorite part. My What's more fun than a turbo? A turbo with all-wheel drive. When you get it, you get it. The rally-inspired 227 horsepower Subaru WRX. I'm digital. I'm wireless. I practically drive this company. He's got a pocket protector and drives a minivan. I just don't get it. Toshiba copiers make you look good. Sometimes, I feel, I don't know, like I'm trapped. What does your phone say about you? Go to hyperspeed now! Swift! I'll never forget you. Never. Bing. What? Just pick a movie. Now at Radio Shack, the finest from RCA can give you even more movies with an RCA digital satellite system, free from Dish Network. Buy it now, keep service for a year, and Dish Network will pay you back with monthly equipment credits. How about this? No, please. Move along, little doggy. Radio Shack. Start your Sunday with the NFL Countdown Team, now joined by Coach Bill Parcells. And they're in trouble. And get weekly insights from John Madden, 11 a.m. on ESPN. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday Night, brought to you by Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive. When you get it, you get it. And by Toshiba, the official sponsor of people who make copies. Toshiba, don't copy, leave. This is the 11th largest stadium in college football. In fact, the town of Clemson has just under 12,000, so 6.7 times the population of the city is here in the stadium. From the 35-yard line, the give is to Bruce Perry, and Perry finding some running room. It's a pickup of eight. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now in our studio for an update. All right, Jeff, a win today for Colorado gives them the Big 12 North title. Take it on Iowa State at home. Robert Hodge up top, D.J. Hackett coming down with it. They've missed a field goal, so the Buffs still up 10-7. Meanwhile, Florida now up 21-7 on South Carolina. First with three touchdowns. All right, Matt, thank you. From the 42-yard line, it'll be second down and three. And a good job by Clemson. Bruce Perry is... Tackled by Dewan Polk. It's a loss of one. We talked about at the top of the show, Bruce Perry last year rushing for over 1,200 yards. He was the ACC Offensive Player of the Year, as you see those numbers. 
I asked Ralph Friedgen how much we'd see him, and he said, well, the problem was not only was Downs playing well and Allen playing well, he wasn't necessarily sure that Perry was in game shape. But clearly he got him in early, and he's going to see what kind of shape he's in, and that will dictate as to how many touches number one gets. Perry tore his left groin August 20th, and it has been a slow mend since. Third and four. McBrien in trouble. He'll keep the football. He has a lane and more. 40. It's a foot race now. The far sideline. Can he get into the end zone? No. Stopped at the five-yard line by Justin Miller and Brian Mance. It's a 54-yard keep by Scott McBrien. Now, how many times do you see a screen pass go awry and then it ends up being a 50-yard play for the quarterback? Here he pumps and fakes, you're going to see it. He pump fakes here. Now everybody is going to come to the side like this, and it opens up like the Red Sea. He pump fakes, is able to beat one tackler. There's nobody downfield because they read the screen perfectly. How many times did it happen? You do exactly what you're supposed to defensively. It breaks down instead. It's a 50-plus yard run. Shows the athleticism of McBrien. I like the Red Sea analogy because it looked like he was in a cherry. First and goal from the five. There is the handoff. Running room trying to find the end zone is Bruce Perry. And Perry is stacked up just short of the end zone by Altroy Broderick, who is the rover. What that last play reminded me of was this. So many times you'll see, for instance, on a punt return where everybody runs to what they think is going to be the wall. And that's what happened there. The defense sprinted to where they saw the screen set up. And as a result, that chasm that Brian was able to take advantage of. Take a look at the scoring Amazing. percentage for Maryland. You expect that from a Ralph Friesian team. Second and goal from the two-yard line. The handoff. Perry. And this time, nothing doing as Eric Meekins is there, the free safety. Bruce Perry is from Philadelphia. He is majoring in criminal justice as we take a look at Meekins from Easley, South Carolina, the senior, 6'3", 190 pounder. You notice that at the end, Perry wasn't quite sure. He was on top of the body, but evidently they felt that Meekins had stopped his forward progress, and this is where Maryland has to be careful not to jump off sides because the noise will be deafening. Third and goal from the one. Fans on their feet here. McBrien play action into the end zone. Touchdown, Derek Miller, the tight end. And Maryland is on the board at Clemson. I said play action. It's so painfully predictable, and I'm very surprised that Clemson fell for it. You had to figure third and one. They're not going to go run the thing again because they've already stuffed them. And yet, great play fake on the part of McBrien and Miller wide open for six. Nick Novak with a point after attempt, as you see Ralph Friedgen, the former Georgia Tech assistant. Former San Diego Charger assistant as well. Friedgen and Michael Kane have done a tremendous job with McBrien. And the point after attempt is no good. So Nick Novak misses, and he has been terrific in the field goal department. 15 of 18 on the season, but the point after mistake here for the Maryland Terrapins. But never mind, it is a touchdown and a six-play, 65-yard drive. In 1954, in Junction, Texas, Paul Bear Bryant put 115 football players through hell. We're going to work now. You damn near killed my friend! He ain't quit. But those who survived lived to become champions. One heartbeat. That is what we've been looking for ever since we arrived. ESPN Original Entertainment presents The Junction Boys. Saturday, December 14th, 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Adelphia Power Lake, it's life wide open. There's only one place to go to find the best values on furniture for every room in your home. Come to Value City Furniture to see our incredible selection. You can cozy up in this luxurious sofa and love seat for just $699. For a limited time, when you buy both, you get the matching recliner free. And look at this great oak wall bed for just $569. You save over 35%. High quality, low prices, great values. Value City Furniture, you just can't do any better. 
Welcome back to Death Valley. Maryland is now on the board with six. I spoke with offensive coordinator Charlie Taft and asked him at what point Scott McBride developed. When did he realize that he was really getting the offense? Coach told me, although he's still working on getting to be a better quarterback, he said the West Virginia game was the turning point where he really gained more confidence and the whole team has responded. Well, he was a transfer from West Virginia where he had played there, so there was extra incentive going against the Mountaineers. And he has been terrific during this streak. Terrapins began at one and two. They were beaten by Notre Dame and Florida State. And since then, they have found their way. Derek Hamilton from a yard deep in his end zone. And Hamilton across the 22-yard line. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now in our studio. Matt? Hi, right, checking in with the Pac-10. Checking in with the Pac-10, Arizona State and USC. SC knocking Carson Palmer, Alice Holmes, and yes, he gets in for the touchdown. SCF 17-3, Colorado State, last unbeaten in the Midwest, Mountain West Conference of 21-6. Adam Holmes, San Diego State quarterback, has left the game. Five yards, we hit. So they're going to want to do that again, and that makes sense. Get a little bit better field position. Colorado State has been, Sonny Lubick's just done a great job there in Fort Collins, as has Ralph Friedgen in College Park. If Cecil Sapp were playing somewhere else, say on the East Coast, don't you think he'd be getting a lot more attention, that he would be more of a household name than he is playing in the Mountain West? Well, certainly that's a contributing factor. Fort Collins is not exactly a media epicenter. <laughs> but to anybody who's had a chance to watch number 32 for the Rams knows that that's a quality back. Yeah, on their way to the Liberty Bowl. Hey man, number 46 missed an extra point. I'm upset. Come on, man. You got to do honor to that jersey number, Holmes. You wore that with great pride for the Raiders in the AFC. Well, not great pride. It's because I couldn't get 44. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick Novak kicking off. And this is not very high and not very deep. It is Justin Miller. And Miller takes a shot, and he is down at the 26-yard line. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN2, Avon Coburn and the Mountaineers face Lee Suggs of the number 13 ranked Hokies live from Blacksburg. Then on Thursday night at 7.30 on ESPN, the Pittsburgh Panthers ended Virginia Tech's perfect season. Now they look to repeat that beat against number one ranked Miami on College Football Thursday brought to you by Circuit City. Well, the argument, of course, is which one of the two should be Heisman Trophy winner. Should it be McGahee or Dorsey? Of course, you see the numbers of McGahee quite impressive. On first down, the catch is made by Rambert. And Rambert with a pickup of about six yards. So that'll bring up second and four as you get a look at Charlie Whitehurst. I like the way Whitehurst sees the field. You don't see that often in a young quarterback. William he usually gets fixated or he only sees half the field. You pointed out at the top of the show the, the advantage of being the son of an NFL quarterback. He shows remarkable poise for a youngster. Think your son had an advantage of being a wideout at Brigham Young? Given he, your background? No, he had a disadvantage because he's got his grandparents' genetics. My dad, my, my dad's only 5'9", and that's what happened. I'm, I'm sorry, son. Toby, I did the best I could. From the 31, they need to get to the 37 for first down. Here's the handoff. First down, Clemson. Bernard Lambert is there. Let's hear it from Charlie Whitehurst right now, talking about taking on the Terrapins here. I think this is going to be a lot bigger test. I mean, Maryland, you know, being a ranked team, and they're hot right now. You know, their defense, you know, they've been playing real hard and stuff. And, I mean, sure, I don't, I don't think Duke and North Carolina were, were bad teams by any means, but uh, this is going to be a bigger test. I mean, a team that's hot is a lot more dangerous than, you know, just a good team. You know what I mean? They're playing with a lot of confidence, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a big test for us. Whitehurst has a lot of confidence also. Redshirt freshman with the maturity that he showed just in talking with him. Very together kid. Here's Rambert. And Rambert is stacked up by the Maryland defense. It's a gain of two. A good job by Leon Joe. We talked about him at the outset of the broadcast. Really overshadowed by E.J. Henderson. But it's a mistake if you're an offensive coordinator and you forget about Joe. Check out the pipes on number 32. There's some yokes right there, and there's a reason for that. Joe is absolutely all-world in the weight room. A 470-pound bench press and a 4.41 in the 40, but is it number 32? Check out those triceps. I'm telling you, I guess as a lifter, I'm just envious. Man, that guy's put together. Need to get to the 47-yard line. Here it is on second down. Whitehurst in trouble, and he will be sacked by E.J. Henderson. So Henderson gets to him. It is a loss of six, and it will bring up third and long. We'll call it third and 15. 
Henderson isn't, no, isn't normally known as a sacker, but then again, he does hold the all-time record at Maryland for tackles for loss, beating the record set by a pretty good player. I think his name was Randy White, who went on to a Hall of Fame career with the Dallas Cowboys. Whitehurst actually scrambles right into him, and of course right there he's down. And even though the crowd wants to cheer for it, the reality is number 42, another TFL. Henderson is the most decorated player in the ACC on either side of the football. Clemson is 0 for 2 on third down conversions. Whitehurst in trouble and taken down by Duran Roundtree. So the linebacking core from Maryland very busy in the face of Charlie Whitehurst. And it'll bring up fourth down. I'm telling you that Roundtree was a bad... Okay, never mind. Shut your, <laughs> Shut mouth. your mouth. And we're talking about Roundtree. Once again, another stud in the weight room is Roundtree. Top bench press on the team, 490 pounds. Fa wow. Favorite shaft is Richard Roundtree, or would it be Samuel please, L. Jackson? Please, Samuel L. Jackson. Isaac Hayes soundtrack. It's all world. Now, take a look at Suter. We've been talking about this earlier. The courage of number 34. No fair catches. Remember, this is a young man who's taken four back for touchdowns, tying an NCAA mark. Win Cop is third punt, and Steve Suter is deep. Here is the punt. It is high. It is short. And it will take a Clemson bounce and go out of bounds. An AFC battle for survival and a chance for Raider redemption is Rich Gannon, Jerry Rice. And the league's most potent offense squares off against Tom Brady and the defending Super Bowl champions. Raiders and Patriots tomorrow on Sunday Night Football, also available on ESPN Deportes. And it all starts with NFL Primetime, brought to you by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern Time. Gannon was unbelievable. That's as accurate as I've ever seen a quarterback throw. And what you're not seeing in those numbers, 21 straight completions in the game, an NFL standard. There's a flag on the play as we watch the ball roll out of bounds, and evidently it's against it's like Maryland. It's against Maryland. Maybe a hold. Well, if it's a hold, then again, the debate then is, was the, was the punt in the air or not? Now, he can't, he can't decide, or maybe, maybe his <laughs> microphone isn't working. Holding on the defense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Fourth down. It's working. There we go. Well, once again, field position. This is an issue for Clemson because coming into the game, Clemson's net punt average was less than third. That's right. Like Maryland. Certainly, field position is always an issue in any game. But when you play a good team like Maryland and they've got the great punt returner, you've got to get it going in special teams. So, win cop again. And Steve Suter is deep. Win cop. Wasn't he the former? Did he punt at Georgia? He is from Athens. Yeah. And here is the punt. And Suter trying to find some room. Wow, is he fun to watch. And he is a lot of fun. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now in our studio. Hot Iowa State and Colorado and meanwhile the Kansas State Wildcats are big Iowa State fans right now. Seneca Walsh to Lance Young, 50 yards to the touch. Iowa State up 14-10 now. Nightclub's looking good right now. That would be an upset in Boulder right now. So from the 25-yard line, it'll be first down for Scott McBrien. Terrapins leading 6-0 here late in the first quarter. Monroe and Williams are the wideouts left and right. McBride wants to throw up top into double coverage, and it's incomplete. A lucky thing that ball wasn't closer to the target. As Jeff Dugan, the tight end, was out there from Allison Park, Pennsylvania. During the seven-game win streak, McBrien has been about 61% of his throws, which is quite good for a youngster who up to the, you know, had not had much experience, but you're very astute there, Jeff. That was a throw that he was lucky that he did not get back. Take a look at Maryland and what they've done in the first quarter. And what a difference between the eight wins and the two losses defined by the first 15 minutes of these ball games. From the shotgun formation, here is the give. And it is to Bruce Perry, a gain of five. Tackled by Khalid Vaughn, the left end, who is there. We well, talked about whether or not Perry was in game shape. Evidently, Ralph Friesen has decided we will get you in game shape. We're not going to wait. And certainly, this is a crucial game for both teams. 
So Maryland is two for three on third down conversions. They are staring at a 35. They need to get to the 35-yard line. The option, the pitch from McBrien. It is to Bruce Perry, and Perry is banged out of bounds by Justin Miller, the man who had the interception, and that'll bring up fourth down. We talked about Justin Miller and his coverage skills, but the 185-pounder shows that he's willing to come up and make a hit. He doesn't make that play. Perry has it for the first down. Instead, Clemson forces a three and out. So we will see Barnard, the punter, and Derek Hamilton will be deep. First one was 44 yards. Here's the punt, not very good. Low and returnable. And Hamilton is brought down at the 40-yard line, so it will be pretty good coverage or pretty good uh, field position for Clemson. 32-yard punt, one-yard return as we take a look at the ACC standing. James Lynch, their stud fullback, in on the tackle. And, of course, you see Maryland there just behind Florida State. Clemson needs to make a move, of course. They want to get to a bowl. Yes, they're bowl eligible with six wins, but clearly I think the big issue tonight really is that Tommy Bowden has emphasized throughout the week the need for his team to beat a ranked opponent. Yeah, and you look how Virginia has made a move, too, where they've been playing some excellent football. Clemson games the third in the string of five conference games for Maryland. Will be the, the road team for the fourth time. And a pretty good run by Curry along the Maryland sidelines. It's a gain of nine yards, and it'll bring up second and one. Quick screen, you get your speed strut to the outside, and if you can beat one guy, maybe he can go the distance. As they say, you cannot teach speed. Boy, he has a lot of it. So we got a minute 25 left here in the first quarter. And Clemson maybe with something going. Here is the pitch. It is to Rambert. Rambert running room. And Rambert is brought down at the 31-yard line by Andrew Smith, Smith the strong safety. And let's go to Matt Weiner after the 20-yard game. All right, Colorado State out west at San Diego State. Rams are the last unbeaten team in the Mountain West. It's Justin Holland in for Bradley Van Pelt. That's a coach's decision to Joey Capari. And it's 28-6. Meanwhile, BYU up on New Mexico. The winner is bowl eligible. Hey, hey, Matt. Matt, where's this BYU highlights, Holmes? I'm going to see my son catch a ball. Come on. BYU trying to be bowl eligible. Although I will say Who would this. have thought? You were one of the first people to talk about the, the, the abilities of Justin Holland. I mean, that kid is beautiful throw. He is terrific for Colorado State. And the handoff here on first down is Bernard Rambert. And wrapped up by Durand Roundtree. It's a gain of four yards for Clemson. Rambert is establishing the run for Clemson that they so desperately need. They have really struggled with the running game coming into this year. In fact, in Tommy Bowden's tenure here in Clemson, this has been the worst year for rushing yards. He said they absolutely have to get it going to keep them on us. And here in the first quarter, they've been able to do that. Second and eight from the 29-yard line. Both receivers come to the near side in McKelvey and Robinson. And in the I formation is Harrell and Rambert. Whitehurst, broken play, pitching it, and lucky that Clemson retains possession of the ball as Rambert comes up with the football at the last moment. Somebody who turned the wrong way, maybe the quarterback. What ended up happening is Whitehurst spent all that time trying to go to an audible, and they ended up going the wrong direction. They're talking about it, but they're very lucky to get this ball back. The guy is behind him, and he's not quite there. He holds on and makes the fresh mistake of pitching it. Fortunately, they're able to recover their own fumble. Corning preseason NIT begins Monday at 7 on ESPN2. I've been driving on hot my hands when on the wheel. And the boys in my hands. my favorite part. My favorite part. What's more fun than a turbo? A turbo with all wheel drive. Get it, you get it. The rally inspired 227 horsepower Subaru WRX. Ice Age.
on DVD and video November 26th. Off-Road Fury 2. Now play it online. Rated E for everyone. Visit Western.com. Member of Starwood Preferred Guest. So, today's the big garage sale. What's the matter with this baby? I really wanted to keep that, but it doesn't steer right, and the nuts are rounded off, so I can't fix it. I've got just the thing. It's an innovative new tool, the Craftsman Bolt-Out Damage Nut and Bolt Remover. These spiral-cut edges are tapered to provide maximum gripping power on any fastener. Hex, round, or square head. It's only $19.99, and because it's from Sears, your satisfaction is guaranteed. Use it almost anywhere on the car. Craftsman makes anything possible. It's the perfect tool for any damaged or stripped fastener. I tried fixing this with pliers, and now the nut's completely rounded off. Not a problem. The Craftsman bolt-out set includes five sizes and storage case. Hey, Bob, had a lot of people asking where they can get the bolt-out. Sears. Where else? Order your Craftsman bolt-out set for only $19.99. Call 1-800-944-3773. we begin the second quarter. 6-0 Maryland to lead on Clemson. I'm Jeff Hollinger with Todd Christensen and Stacey Pates. Glad to have you along on this Saturday night from South Carolina. Third and 17 for the Tigers. Whitehurst in trouble. He'll keep the football. He has room. And he has enough for the first down. Clemson had been 0-3 on third down conversions, but not that time. A gain of 21 yards tackled by Foxworth. One of the things that he shows here that's particularly impressive, when we interviewed him, he said, I'm never going to slide and I'm never going to go down, but maybe I'll try and avoid some people. Now he cuts up the field and shows a lot more speed and athleticism than you would think for the six foot four, 200 pounder, able to get a first down on third and 17. McKelvey and Robinson come to the near side. It's first and 10 from the 18 yard line. The pitch. It is to Rambert. Rambert trying to turn the corner is run out of bounds inside the 15 by Madhu Williams. A gain of five yards. The ESPN2 game track begins with McBrien. Well, that's the biggest play of the game so far. This 54-yard run on a broken down screen led to the touchdown pass to Miller. Now on the Clemson side of the ball, as we talked about, they're able to establish the run a little bit, but as a result right now, they're down 6-0. We'll see later on in this game how big that mixed, missed extra point is going to loom. Meanwhile, Clemson is starting to run the ball pretty well. They had 53 yards in the first as we take a look at but, the injured player. But the big reason for that is that man right there, Rambert. Seven carries for 42 yards. At six a clip, that's exactly what the doctor ordered. But if he's injured, that's not, that's not going to bode well for the running game. Looks like he's all right. Tigers, by the way, are 17-1 and one when they rush for 200 yards, and they're on track right now for that. Well, you can see Madhu Williams as he brings him down. It's a little bit awkward there on the left ankle, but it doesn't look like it's tweaked too badly, so hopefully we get a chance to see him back in. Yusuf Kelly in for Rambert. So second and five at the 13-yard line. <laughs> hey, that's that's what happens when you're slow. a star player. No, when you're a star player, you get to walk. <laughs> you know what? If that's a lineman or something, as Mark May will tell you, they'll say, come on, hustle off, so we got to play. Instead, it's a star player, so he takes his time. <laughs> Double stand. Yeah, that's the way it is. From the 13-yard line. And the pitch. To about the 10-yard line is Yusef Kelly. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Well, Jeff, Penn State's Larry Johnson, thanks to his performance, took over Chris Brown's national rushing lead by 119 yards. Brown well on his way to regaining it. He's up over 100. Touchdown there pulls his team back within four. So Colorado trying to get back at Iowa State. 
I'll tell you what, Larry Johnson moved up on my list today, though, with that 323, I think it was, 324. Well, wow. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago against Illinois when he was just, just 279 in that game. There's no stopping him. He's unbelievable. Give credit to that old line at Penn State. They need to get to the eight-yard line. Here is the pitch. And tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Yusef Kelly by Randy Starks. The defensive tackle, it's a loss of two. So it'll bring up fourth down and about five. Talk about how we talked about how athletic number 57 was at the top of the show, the young sophomore and the tackles for loss. Watch the penetration. Not only the penetration by number 57, but his ability to get to the runner. I'm not sure I particularly care for that toss in that situation because that gives the defensive lineman the opportunity to pursue from the backside, and now Clemson will be forced to attempt a field goal. This will be a 29-yard attempt by Aaron Hunt. He is 11 of 14 on the season. His longest has been from 47 yards. Again, this is from 29 yards out. Here is the kick. It's on the way, and it is good. So Clemson is on the scoreboard with Maryland. It's now 6-3. Terrapins have a lead on the Tigers. Suzuki, proud presenting sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. During the Suzuki year-end clearance, get zero down. Zero percent financing for five years. And now, for a limited time, you'll also get $1,000 customer cash for the best price all year on the hot new Aereo. The XL7 SUV and every O2 model. Every Suzuki also comes with America's best warranty, making Suzuki America's best value. Hurry in before the Suzuki year-end clearance is over. Digital Yoda, digitally filmed, digitally mastered, the first perfect clone on DVD. Star Wars Episode 2, own it today on DVD. Outback's curbside takeaway. Call up, pull up, and we'll bring it right to your car. So you can enjoy our perfectly grilled shrimp and our juicy steaks seared to perfection. Hey, I think you might have accidentally locked me out. Outback's curbside takeaway. Nothing gets your day going like the invigorating scent of Zest Energy Rush. But it will wake you up. So please, be considerate. Start with zest. Get refreshed. Guess who? Hello? Hello, Mr. Storm. The dreaded telemarketer. No, it's, it's strong. Telemarketers got your number? Get the telezapper. And soon those annoying calls will just about stop altogether. Available at stores everywhere. Pet Boys ASE certified technicians can help maintain and repair your car. Before small problems get big, our technicians tell you what's wrong and fix it. No matter what you drive, come to Pet Boys for expert advice and service. Pet, Pet Boys, we're, we're car people. And we are in Death Valley Memorial Stadium at Frank Howard Field, Clemson, South Carolina. The rain stopped at kickoff. And a pleasant night for football, temperature about 52 degrees, and a very close football game where the two biggest plays have been runs by the quarterback. Stephen Furr kicking off. It's high, and it's short, and Suter will bring it. Look at Suter. Penalty marker. There's another one as he is down at the 31-yard line, maybe the 32. It's a 30-yard return by Suter. Latrez Harrison, the former quarterback, now wide receiver, trying a little bit too hard to help out his buddy. He pushes in the back, and both officials saw it, and as a result, the field position will be moved back to about the 20. There's a little of Vinny Sutherland's explosiveness, the former Purdue Boilermaker. Block in the back, by the way, during the return. 10 yards, first down. Great speed on the part of Suter to watch. Here it is right here. There's Harrison. As he pushes in the back, Suter cuts to the outside, and that's an easy call for the official. I'm really impressed with Suter's speed. They said he's 4 3 7, and I'm not sure that that's not legit after watching this youngster get all over the field. Monroe and Harrison are the wideouts. Downs and Lynch are in the I formation. From the 22 yard line, the give is the Downs over the right tackle. And Downs up to the maybe the 27-yard line, a gain of about five. Tackled by Justin Miller. 
We talked about what Downs contributes in terms of speed, but a lot of his yardage has been between the tackles. And I always like to remind the youngsters, Downs is five foot eight and 196 pounds. So you mothers out there that think, oh no, my boy, he's gonna get killed. He's just too little. I don't think so. And don't forget that Downs rushed for nearly 2,200 yards as a senior in high school. So the size factor is just not an issue at all. Bruce Berry is in, Chris Downs is out. Need to get to the 32 yard line for the first down. Second and five. And the handoff is to Perry and hit behind the line of scrimmage by Bryant McNeil. It's a loss of two. So the aggressive Clemson defense read it in a hurry. Two, pre two pretty good defensive tackles in Eason and McNeil coming into this game. Nine tackles for a loss. He comes on a stunt. He loops underneath, as you can see. He loops right into the play. But a lot of times you see a defensive lineman stunt and they can't make the play. McNeil is able to do it. He shakes off the blocker, blocker and drops Perry for a loss. His 10th tackle for loss on the season. Maryland is two for four on third down conversions with a crowd on their feet here in death battle. It's third and eight. Shotgun formation for McNeil. Firing all by himself. First down is Bruce Perry who came out of the backfield and knocked out of bounds along the Terrapin sideline. It's a gain of 11. Tackle by Eric Sampson. So many times defensively you focus downfield when you have third and long and you forget about the back. That's exactly what happened. Perry comes out of the backfield from the tailback position. He's just going to loop over here and he's going to get he's going to get forgotten because everybody is coming back into their lanes to watch. Look at him on the sideline just sitting there in the flat. That's 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 an easy one. That's no brainer. Easy first down for the Terrapins. Harrison to the right. Monroe, Parson, and Williams to the near side on first down from the 35-yard line. Shotgun formation, and the give is to the running back, Bruce Perry. It's a gain of one. It'll bring up second and nine. As the Clemson defense very strong there, Rodney Feaster is there, the middle linebacker from Chester, South Carolina. He's a senior. I wonder if, you know what, you think about it, Downs has been carrying the load all year. I wonder if at this point, and of course I realize, you know what, Perry was a star last year, no doubt, he's got to get his carries. But if I'm number 20, I'm thinking to myself, I'm kind of coach, I can do this, and I've been doing it the last couple of games. Don't make me the Rodney Dangerfield of running backs here. Well, you wonder if that ankle might be bothering him a little bit. He heard it last week, so you wonder how his health is right now. On second and nine, firing and completing the catch is made by Latrez Harrison. And he is thrown out of bounds in Clemson territory by Brian Mance. It's a gain of 18. And move those chains. It's a first down for Maryland. Last year, Harrison was the number two quarterback. Watch number four. But that's just a little bit too much. That's way too far off the corner. In that case, that's Brian Mance. You're just giving him way too much cushion. Harrison with a big body, about 6'3", 2'10", 215. Pushes him up the field and gets back. But Mance has to be a little bit closer than that. From the 46-yard line, here is the give. It is to Bruce Perry, and Perry to the 41-yard line. It's a gain of five. It'll bring up second and five. J.J. Howard from Huger, South Carolina, the right end. Perry able to bounce off of Dewan Polk and cut up field between the tackles. Perry starting to get a little bit of rhythm here, although his average per carry may not show it. When you think about Ralph Friedgen, you think about offense. He is the master. Second and five from the 41 yard line. Here's Bruce Perry. And Perry with good second effort getting very close to another first down from Maryland to gain a four. Perry probably is a yard short. And it'll bring up third and one from the 37. Eric Sampson is there for Clemson. Well, Eric Sampson is there, but he didn't follow through on the tackle. He just gets a shoestring, and he's frustrated because he knows he needed to drop in there. I think the thing that they get with Perry that they do not quite get with Downs, Perry is a little bit stronger and able to break a few more tackles, whereas Downs a little bit faster. Double tight end set on third and one from the 37. The option, and it's James Lynch, the fullback. He is pushed back. Very close to the first down. He needed about a yard, and that looks like what he got. Give him the first down. I, I think he has it. Rodney Thomas is there, the middle linebacker, but it depends on the spot. Oh, it's fourth down, and you figure 270 pounds of fullback, that should be easy. But boy, the people up front, particularly Rodney Thomas, push him back. 
and he did not get it. And I'm thinking that Maryland here is going to go for it. Ralph Reach not particularly happy with the spot. Well, I don't think they got the greatest spot in the world right now. Hometown advantage. <laughs> you take what you get on the road. From the 36, fourth down and less than one. Straight ahead, and there is the first down. James Lynch is there. He picks up two yards. So the drive continues for Maryland. Rodney Thomas and John Leake are both there. And they have combined for about 247 tackles combined here in the season so far in the ACC. Pretty decent surge by the offensive line, but Lynch, once again, 270-pounder, knows that all he's got to do is get across the stripe, and that's what he does. Cuts back against the grain a little bit. Actually, good penetration on the part of Clemson, but Lynch still able to get the necessary yard. Tenth play of the drive. Play action. McBride going long. Stepping in front of his teammate to grab the touchdown. Jeff Dugan was out there, but it is Jafar Williams finding the ball for a 35-yard touchdown. This is this is poor coverage on the part of Clemson from this vantage point. It looked like there were two guys that could have got the touchdown. Watch downfield, you get a chance to see it. There's going to be a deep crossing route. The tight end is going to come free, and the ball is going to end up right here. Look at that. You've got two white shirts that are wide open. Where's the free safety on this play as the ball comes over there? Jafar Williams completely untouched in for the score on Maryland. Great play action fade on the part of McBride. Nick Novak, he missed his first point after attempt, and this one is dead center. And Maryland has extended their lead, courtesy of Jafar Williams on the touchdown from Scott McBride. How exciting this is for the wide receiver because they do not throw much. You can see that the defensive backs are looking in the backfield. Jafar Williams able to run right past Mance for the touchdown. Suzuki, proud presenting sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. During the Suzuki year-end clearance, get zero down. Zero percent financing for five years. And now, for a limited time, you'll also get $1,000 customer cash for the best price all year on the hot new Aereo. The XL7 SUV and every O2 model. Every Suzuki also comes with America's best warranty, making Suzuki America's best value. Hurry in before the Suzuki year-end clearance is over. Today, Seems like everybody's getting back to nature. Nice to know some of us never left. Smooth and refreshing as a mountain stream. Head for the mountains of Bush. I remember I was craving a cheese sandwich, only I didn't have cheese or a car. So I build my own ride. At the same time, an unsuspecting Mr. Yang Lem Chu was getting in his car. We rode 400 miles until fate intervened in Cheddar, New Mexico, at a house of cheese. And I can't help but think, was this coincidence or part of something bigger? Stuart Scott and the gang get you ready for Monday night. Monday night countdown, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Delivered by UPS. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday Night. Brought to you by the exciting lineup of Suzuki products. All proud presenting sponsors of the Heisman Trophy. And by smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush life. Where were you in the fall of 1985? That is the last time that Maryland won a football game at Clemson, but so far so good here in the second quarter, up by 10 points. Well, since you asked, I was playing the Denver Broncos <laughs> in, uh, in the L.A. Coliseum as Ralph Regan, very pleased with his young quarterback, 5 of 8 for 82 yards and two touchdowns thus far. Novak's kick takes Justin Miller into the end zone. He'll bring it out. And some running road. He's to the 30. Look out. It's a sprint toward six. And knocked out of bounds is Justin Miller. Special teams for Clemson coming through. Dominic Foxworth, the left quarterback working on special teams, saves a touchdown, a 76-yard return. What, what he does here, great athletic ability right here. Now watch when he starts to hit up field. He shouldn't catch it going backwards, but it shows how fast he is. Now, is he, now stop. 
If you stop, see now you got all the white shirts coming here, heading in this direction. He cuts back against the grain with this lead blocker, and all the white shirts then get wiped out. Now Miller cuts to the outside and shows his speed, but again, cornerback on cornerback. Two best cover guys in the field, Foxworth and Miller. Foxworth saves the touchdown. 76 yards on the return on first down. It is complete. The catch is made by Kevin Youngblood, the junior wide receiver from Jacksonville, Florida. And gain he, of six. And what's Youngblood doing? I know he's got 46 catches, but he comes up and you saw him use his hands and go, come on, get the ball up, get the ball up. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, that's not how you get more balls. You come back to the huddle, you say, thank you, quarterback. Thank you very much for throwing me the ball. They need to get it to the 14-yard line for the first down. It's second and four. They go with three wide receivers, Youngblood, Hamilton, and Robinson. Shotgun formation, a low snap. And here is Bernard Rambert, so the injury not serious, serious enough to keep him on the bench. Let's check in with Stacey Pates after the game of one. Guys, as the offensive line coach Ron West was addressing his team, Coach Bowden came over, patted each guy on the offensive line, on their shoulder pads, told him nice protection earlier in the game. Let's get back to that. Protect, 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 and get it done. Well, they'll try and get a first down done here. Third down conversions, one for five for the Tigers. It's third and four. Robinson and McKelvey are to the near side. Whitehurst seems to have been audibly a lot here in the first two quarters. Here comes the pressure. Whitehurst gets rid of it, and it is low and incomplete. The intended target was J.J. McKelvey. The blitz was on. Whitehurst had to get rid of it, and it was not good enough for the completion. Foxworth on the covery on the coverage of McKelvey. I'm talking to Gary Blackman, defensive coordinator for Maryland. He said this very thing, and that is, is that we're going to come after him. Once again, you see right in his face is number 57, Foxworth there on the coverage and does a nice job, even the ball is underthrown. But Starks, once again, hurrying the quarterback throw. Aaron Hunt, a 35-yard field goal attempt. He is hit from 29. This one is on the way, and it is dead center perfect. Fire the cannon because Clemson has six points on the board for Tommy Bowden and the great fans here in the upstate of South Carolina. But Maryland continues to lead Hit it, boys. This week, the Countdown Gang catches up with the NFL's brightest. We've got Tom, who's bundling up for football's biggest rematch. I was pretty confident as a first-year player, but now I'm even more confident. Donovan, who's wondering how to find the end zone? I may hold the ball a little longer than usual. And Plexico, who's catching everything in sight. He's a premier receiver in the league now. Plus John, Mort, and Week 11 preview. Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. on ESPN. Adelphia Power Link, it's life wide open. Announcing the package sale at Value City Furniture. Great looks at tremendous prices. Just look at this wonderful three-piece cafe set. Only $199. Think that's great? Then check out the matching occasional tables for just $79 each. And the sofa and love seat for only $599. And for the ultimate in casual comfort, don't miss this incredible all-wood queen bed. Just $299. High quality, low prices, great values. Value City Furniture. You just can't do any better. You gotta get in the ball too. So the Tigers are on the board. And it's now 13 to 6, courtesy of the 76-yard kickoff return by Miller, and that set up Aaron Hunt for the 35-yard field goal. And that put a tiger in their tank, as they say. Uh, yes. that, didn't that remind you of the old commercial? I saw an Esso station here in town. Esso. That was when I was a little kid and I lived in the East. That station, it looks like, has been closed since you were a little kid. Here is the kick. It is high, it is short, and Suter will bring it. There's a running room coming to the near side. Look out! And Suter is run out of bounds. 
catch is short of midfield by Stephen Furr, the kicker. It's a 44-yard return. So we've seen some fine return work for both clubs here in the first half. A return of 44 yards. This is identical. Now watch it. It looks like he's going middle. Stop. Stop. He's going to the middle, right? So everybody's coming. On. they got to stay in their lane. Everybody comes like this. Now what happens? Bang. He cuts to the outside, and all of those orange shirts are out of their lanes. And as we pointed out, Suda with the 4-3-7 speed, able to get to the outside and give Maryland great field position near midfield. They'll mark it at the 49-yard line, and Chris Downs is the single setback. McBrien play action, wants to throw. Trouble, and down he goes at the 38-yard line. Brian McNeil is there, the senior from Swansea, South Carolina. A little bit of panic on the part of Scott McBrien. Yes, there was some pressure, but he actually hands the sack. Watch number 91. McBrien is going to actually run right into him. Here you go. Oh, nuts. And give McNeil credit. He is right there to drop him. Brian McNeil, 6'5", 245 pounds. That's his sixth sack of the season, 11th tackle for loss. And by the way, that guy right there, one of 12 children. And so you knew the axiom in his household. <laughs> call me for dinner, but don't call me late. One of 12 kids. It's a loss of 10. Second and 20 from the 39. Shotgun McBrien shovel pass to Chris Downs. And Downs is chopped down very quickly after a gain of five. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN2. Avon Coburn and the Mountaineers face Lee Suggs at the 13th ranked Hokies live from Blacksburg. Then on Thursday night at 7.30 Eastern Time on ESPN, the Pitt Panthers ended Virginia Tech's perfect season. Now they look to repeat that feat against number one ranked Miami on College Football Thursday, brought to you by Circuit City. A couple of tough games there, Pittsburgh, you mentioned. At Syracuse, remember, they upset Virginia Tech there, and of course they end the season with Virginia Tech. I will say this, Pittsburgh beats Miami in the Orange Bowl. I'll buy you dinner. All right, I'll take you up on that. I'll hold you to it. Third and 16. McBrien deep drop firing and it is complete but short of the first down by about a yard. Jafar Williams making a fine grab. It's a pickup of 15 and depending on the spot less than one. Do you go for it or not? In this situation about when you're up by seven I'd say no but then again I'm not Ralph Regan. He knows a lot more. Well not a lot more but he knows a little <laughs> bit more about offense than I do. Mance has really struggled. Number two at the corner position. We talked at the top about Miller and Mance. Mance has really had his problems. Remember, he was a little bit too far off Williams before. He was the one that appeared, got burned on the touchdown. Number two's got to pick up his player there. All right, they will go for it. He knows a lot more than that. <laughs> Fourth and less than one, the quarterback keeper. It's Scott McBrien, he picks up two. First down, Maryland. The drive is alive. That, that actually is a surprise call, and this is why I say that. McBrien is listed at six feet tall and 180 pounds. Usually if you've got the 6'4", 220 quarterback, this is a no-brainer. But he goes with the quick count and is able to do it because his left guard, C.J. Brooks, is able to get off the ball quickly, goes behind him, rides his butt for the first. Bruce Perry, the single setback. Three wideouts again from Maryland on first and 10 from the 41-yard line of Clemson. And here is the flea flicker. Latrez Harrison wants to throw. He does for the end zone. It's up for grabs and it's incomplete. Now, just as we've been talking about the struggles of Mance at quarterback, Justin Miller has been outstanding. He had every reason to be fooled on that play, but he has what they call makeup speed. Watch number nine. You're going to see it at the bottom. Here's the reverse, and here's the throw. Remember, we mentioned that Harrison was a former quarterback, so he's got a great arm. It looks, for all intents and purposes, this is a touchdown, and the number nine right at the end goes in and bats it away, so Scooter Monroe could not come up with it. And it should be noted, Justin Miller, only a freshman, and he has starred here in this first half. With the ball at the 41, it's second and 10. Nick Bryan with time, and across the middle, the catch is made by Perry. And he is down at the 34-yard line. It's a gain of seven. Tackled by John Leake. Given all of the Perrys, the famous ones that have played at Clemson, it's a little odd to see and say the name Perry playing against the Clemson Tigers. William Dean and the Fridge. And Perry Tuttle, remember? That Perry Tuttle. Very good, on the uh, team that won the national championship. Having said that, however, we need to give a little credit to that offensive line of Maryland. 
they have been giving McBrien an awful lot of time to survey the field and dump underneath. We'll take a break. Late in the second quarter, Maryland trying to keep their drive alive. Three doors down. So hold me when I'm here, not me when I'm wrong. Hold me when I'm scared, and love me when I'm gone. When I'm gone, from their new album, Away From The Sun. Follow-up to the multi-platinum debut, The Better Life. Includes a free DVD while supplies last. Away from the sun. To order by credit card, call 1-888-741-2700. Get a free Three Doors Down poster with each paid order. If you're thinking about calling 1-800-HAIR-CLUB, you may be wondering, who is a hair club client? I am. Call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB for this free hair loss booklet and arrange to speak to a hair loss expert today. With some of the latest breakthroughs in hair loss technology, you really can't tell you've ever had a hair loss problem. And that's the point. So call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB right now and you'll be happy to say, I am. Hair Club, the number one alternative to hair loss. I've always loved working on computers, and in the Army, that's what I do. If you never thought about the U.S. Army or Army Reserve, think about this. There are 212 ways for you to become a soldier and work at a job you'll love. Call for this free video to find out which job is right for you. And if you call 1-800-645-ARMY right now, you'll also receive a free Army t-shirt with your video. Discover the 212 ways you can be an Army of One. We talked about the great catch-up speed of Justin Miller. Take a look on this play again. Here he is at the bottom. Now watch the play. He stops right there. Look at the now. Look at the gap that he's going to have to make up. That's a good. That's a good five to seven yards, and he explodes, goes after it. Harrison throws the ball. He lays out and makes the play. That makes that athleticism of number nine that much more poignant. On third and three, McBrien firing, and it is complete. First down to Scooter Monroe. It's a gain of seven yards. What a clutch play from McBrien finding the Scooter. Nobody would mention McBrien necessarily in the same breath as some of the other great quarterbacks that have come through Maryland, Isaias and Reich and Gelba. Having said that, however, at this point, he's 9 for 12 for 116 yards and two touchdowns. And for a team that's a running team, that's a pretty good guy to have at the control. And the ball at the 27-yard line, it's first down. Eighth play of the drive, three receivers. And Bruce Perry remains the single setback behind McBrien. McBrien going by himself. And no man is an island, but McBrien was there, no gain. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Jeff, coming up at halftime, Buckeye Nation breathing a collective sigh of relief again. We'll tell you how Ohio State escaped this time around. The BCS shakeup will tell you whose numbers no longer compute as well as they once did. And the Heisman Watch, Mark May and I, coming up at the half. Well, the Buckeyes are like Houdini with the way they get out of trouble. It still counts, though. There's the zero in the loss count. With the ball at the 27-yard line now, it's second and ten. Nick Bryant, quick drop, throwing, and it's incomplete. Maybe a little confusion with Scooter Monroe there. McBrien is throwing the hitch, and Scooter Monroe, evidently, when he saw the guy was so far off, thought he was going to go someplace else. But actually, it was ideal for the hitch because he had Mance backed up, as well as Ronnie Deluzme. I asked Ralph Friedgen the other day, when, when they begin one and two, how do you get this team back on track? And he said, Simply that, that we're capable of playing better football and everybody bought into it. Very simple. Third and ten from the 27. Three receivers again. Shotgun formation. Pressure coming. McBride across the middle and it is incomplete. Steve Suter, the target. But there were lots of orange jerseys across the middle of the field around the 10-yard line. And an injured Tiger now on the field. See if we can get a, a number. Number 33, Ronnie DeLasumi from Naples, Florida. Sophomore. He's the rover in the defensive scheme. 6'1, 210 pounder. That was an attempt to thread the needle. That would have been a great pitch and throw, but give Clemson credit. Great job in the secondary. He is still on the turf. We will take a break. Maryland leading Clemson. Terrapins are threatening. Minute. There's a lot more happening at Clemson. Our nanotechnology researchers are developing organic LED TV screens that can roll up. 
Because of Clemson research, muscles and bones made from artificial materials or even your own cells may one day replace those lost from accidents or disease. And coming soon, chameleon fibers that change color on demand. Amazing! Youth, the possibilities seem endless. It's time to explore, to dream. But what are these dreams made of? Some say passion, a desire to excel. Through the generations, dreams have been a part of who we are. As he pulls this ball out of a And the Atlantic Coast Conference has encouraged these dreams for the past 50 years. Now we invite you to join us for the next 50. The Atlantic Coast Conference, accelerating the dream. Ronnie DeLasume is going to be uh, taken off on the cart the way it looks. Still can't tell the injury if it is a leg. One thing that we couldn't tell is indeed that the needle was thread. When they started to walk back, it appeared to me that it was, it was an incompletion. But take a look. The throw right between all of the orange shirts. The catch is made right in the middle of the field by Walker. Suter, rather. Suter proving to himself that not only can he return kicks, but he can come in and make some plays in the pass game as well. Threading the needle, as you so appropriately said a few minutes ago, between all of those orange shirts... Talk about throwing a great strike. And here's one of the advantages of being the Smurf-like receiver. He had to get down and make that play. In a lot of cases, the 6-3, type wide receiver is not able to come up with that play. Instead, Suter able to go down and get it. Suter out of Manchester, Maryland. As Deleuze May is trying to fire up his teammates, you saw him there clapping hard, trying to get his mates to play hard defensively. But it is going to be trouble for Clemson. Now with Maryland looking at first and goal from the nine-yard line, and their offense has had some great balance on this drive. Well, coming into this game, it was pointed out to us by Charlie Taft, the offensive coordinator, that they're best when they only have to throw the ball 20 to 25 times. Up to this point, McBrien has only thrown 14, but he's completed 10 of them. So Maryland on first down with receivers right and left. Now in motion is Harrison to the near side. And here is the handoff. It is to Bruce Perry, and Perry inside the five-yard line down to the four. Eric Meekins, the free safety from Easley, South Carolina, with his second tackle of the ball game. Now inside a minute. And I was going to say, you see the clock running there, but Maryland has two timeouts. They're certainly, they're not necessarily in a hurry, but they opt to take a timeout here. Catch ESPN's Monday Night Countdown beginning at 7.30 Eastern Time as Stuart Scott and the gang provide you with up-to-the-minute NFL news, analysis, and live interviews leading up to Monday Night Football. And join Al Michaels and John Madden in St. Louis. The Rams will host Brian Erlacher and the Chicago Bears on ABC's Monday Night Football at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific Time. Marshall Falk questionable for the game with foot and ankle problems. ESPN and ABC your exclusive home for prime time football. Four years ago, I was in Morgantown, West Virginia, and they had a quarterback named Mark Bolger. I remember that we made an issue over the fact that his father was a Notre Damer. And, of course, nobody really thought that at that time, well, you know, he's a pro prospect, kind of. But, you know, the kid made all the throws. Well, over the last couple of weeks, he's more than made all the throws as he torched San Diego for some 400-plus 400, 400 yards. As we see the play drive that has consumed so much time here, and... Ralph Regan to push him all the right buttons. That is second and goal from the four yard line. Two tight end set. Remember, both touchdown passes have come off a of play action. McBrien on the give. Plowing ahead is Bruce Perry. And Perry picks up two. Tackle by John Leake and Rodney Thomas, the tandem of linebackers. Now I'm surprised at this that they have to call timeout yet again. You know, you had to figure that he was on the sidelines. Why not call two plays? Because then if you don't get it, because more than likely in the third play you're going to throw and it's either complete or incomplete and the clock will stop and you can kick the field goal. Really a big hit on the part of Clemson here. Right in the middle of the field, we talked about the 120-plus tacklers, Tom Thomas and Leak. They combine here to deny Perry the end zone. Get a chance to see that in real time. Yeah. I never get tired of the line as Rodney Thomas drops him. With Bum Phillips, was, well, Bum Phillips was famous for a lot of lines, but one thing he said about football was, football is not a contact sport, it's a collision 
<laughs> sport. And, of course, he made reference to the contact sport being dancing. Halftime report coming up. College game day. All of that straight ahead. We'll update you on college football around America. Lots to talk about. Best coach in D.C. Is it Spurrier, Billick, or Friedrich? Who would you pick? Well, Brian Billick was a former teammate of mine at Brigham Young University. And uh, so I, I, would, I would endow him with the fact that he's the one in this group who has won a world championship. Spurrier, of course, has won a national championship. And Friedgen was the old coordinator when Bobby Ross was the coach at Georgia Tech. So he won a national championship. So I guess uh, given all those considerations, as you see Ralph Friedgen's background as a Terrapin, and since we're here in this Maryland game and we got a shot at Friedgen, I'll go with Billick. <laughs> Loyalties die hard, don't they? Indeed. Third and goal from the two-yard line. McBrien out of the shotgun. Don't think they can't run with 40 seconds left. They can. McBrien wants to throw. Firing, and it's incomplete. Far side of the end zone. Scooter Monroe well covered by Brian Mance. Let's give credit where credit's due in terms of Mance. They run the play, which is very familiar now on the goal line. It's called the fade stop. The receiver makes it look like a fade, then he hits the brakes and comes back, and they throw the ball before he cut, is out of his break. Here's the fade. He looks back. Now he hits the brakes and comes back. Mance has none of it, has his hand on it, bats the ball away. Great coverage by number two. So with 35 seconds left, Nick Novak for the field goal. This will be a 19-yard attempt. Remember that he missed the extra point in the first quarter. The hold and the kick, and this one is good. So Maryland puts three points on the board with 33 seconds left before the end of the first half, and they have grown the lead to 10 points. Remember, Justin Miller had the long kickoff return. And I think that one concern now for Ralph Friedgen and his staff is the fact that they did not take more time off the clock. There's 33 seconds remaining. They could have taken it all the way down, and that could have been the last play of the half if they had been more judicious with their timing. Instead, now Clemson has the opportunity to get some decent field position, maybe get down for a kick. And, of course, the other thing is, after Justin Miller's great kick return, maybe they're not going to kick it deep. But still, Clemson can still get some pretty good field position. Let's take a look at last week. Maryland going against North Carolina State. The Wolfpack undefeated. Well, again, this is a big upset because North Carolina State, you see Suter with the long, long reception. Of course, Novak comes through with the big kick. Scrambling around as is, uh, is Rivers, and there's the big interception. Of course, that was the upset for Maryland. And right now, the Terps are on a high, as we pointed out. Seven straight wins coming into this game, and we haven't had a lot of noise out of Death Valley. No, it's been very quiet. It really has. Also, North Carolina State beaten today by Virginia, so they've lost two in a row after the undefeated. Spirit. Certainly a big letdown. So Justin Miller is the deep man with Nick Novak kicking off. It is quiet. It's, it's very quiet in what is one of the loudest stadiums in America, not only because of the rabid fans, but because of the way the stadium is built. I mean, the, these stands sit right on top of the field. And it's a little pooch kick. Now, now here, I've talked about this ad nauseum. Now, this is interesting. 33 seconds. What was it when it started? 35, was it? Yeah. I so, think, no, I thought it was 33. And, of course, the idea is, is once the ball is touched, so now they're at the 40-yard line, and in essence, you're looking at about 30 yards yeah. to get a field goal. And remember, Clemson has all three of its timeouts remaining. And they go with four wide receivers here on first down from the 40-yard line of the Tigers. Charlie Whitehurst. Shotgun, here's the snap. Across the middle, it is complete. The catch made by Derek Hamilton. Hamilton with first down, a gain of 17 yards. Tackle by Leon Joe. Hurry up offense now by Clemson. Whitehurst looking to the sidelines. The decision already had to be made for the second play. So now the clock running. Whitehurst in trouble. Out of the pocket and down he goes at the 47-yard line by Sean Merriman. The Leo who came to make the stop. 
out of the Maryland scheme. It's a loss of four yards, so 17 seconds are left. Clemson with a timeout here. So is that born July 25th to August 20th? You said the Leo. <laughs> is that? Oh, you know Very what? You've, nice. got your, nice. you've got your hip football nomenclature yeah, working yeah, now. Yeah. Hey, that was a big sack for this reason. Not only does it take those nine seconds off the clock, but they weren't able to get positive yardage. Now they're back in a situation where now they're going to have to get two reasonably big plays down before they can kick a field goal, and they had to waste a time out there that they didn't want to. Aaron Hunt, the place kicker for Clemson, is long and has been 47 yards this season. He has hit two tonight, one from 35 and one from 29. So if you get a, a reasonable pick up here, maybe you have an opportunity to get three. And I think if they can do that, that would be a moral victory of sorts. I think that they really... Holding Maryland yeah. to a field goal down there was good for their defense. So if somehow Clemson can get some points out of this, they could feel a lot better about themselves at halftime. Stadium here seats 81,473, and the enrollment's about 17,000 here. At An amazing discrepancy as we look at the total yards. Maryland certainly has dominated more than 2-1. to one. All right, 17 seconds are left. Four wideouts for Whitehurst. And it's incomplete. Ball over the head of Derek Hamilton along the Clemson sideline. And the numbers now on Whitehurst are 6 4, 11, and 53 yards. What he has to do here now with the four wide receiver package is he has to get two people to run the people off and then get a hook pattern right around the 35 yard line, break a tackle, make a play, call timeout, and give your field goal kicker a chance. Because right now he cannot afford with 11 seconds remaining to scramble all over the place. Third down conversions have been cruel for Clemson. One for six here in the first half. Whitehurst in trouble off his back foot up top. And it is caught by Derek Hamilton at the five-yard line with three seconds left. Timeout, Clemson. I was just about to say what an ill-advised throw. I mean, come on, that's desperation. There's no reason that they should be able to come out. What do you mean, Hail Mary with 11 seconds left? You've still got time. But look at Hamilton, 21 right in the middle. There's the collision. Madhu Williams needed to get off of the receiver and make the play. Watch number 10. He gets bumped off. But that's a great job on the part of McKelvey to shield Williams from the ball. And as a result, Hamilton comes up with a catch. And now they'll be able to kick a much shorter field goal. It is a 42-yard completion, and now field goal coming from Aaron Hunt. Now, if you remember a couple, those of you who are big ESPN people, you'll remember that Chris Berman in his two-minute drill a couple of weeks ago talked about Brett Favre and the Packers and their ability to score just before the end of the first half to get that momentum. We addressed that earlier. You can see that statistic. That certainly is going to be contributing to the well-being and psychology of the Tigers, assuming that Hunt can make this kick. This will be a 22-yard field goal attempt. Aaron Hunt trying to go three for three here in the first half. And Hunt's kick is up, and it is good. Aaron Hunt, three for three. One of the Oak Ridge boys. He's from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, making his folks proud. Let's go to Matt Weiner in our studio. Halftime is here. Hi, right, Jeff. Thanks very much. The Terps haven't won at Clemson since 1985. Tigers have taken eight of their last nine in this series, but they are down at the half. All right, Carolina and Florida. Rex Grossman got it going tonight. 15-yard TD pass. Daryl Carpenter, 14-0 Gators. Third quarter, 14-0 Gators. Rex Grossman, a perfect 12-yard touchdown pass to O.J. Small, 21-0 Florida. More for Mr. Grossman. Fourth quarter, 21-7. Kelvin Kite, 27 yards on the pitch and catch, 28-7 Florida. Grossman tosses four touchdown passes. South Carolina scored just 31 points in their last four games. By the way, Grossman is now finally has more touchdown passes than interceptions on the season. Says he might be sticking around next year. LSU and Alabama just underway. LSU trying to take another step toward the SEC West title that's over on ESPN. Florida State, speaking of the ACC, Maryland fans hoping they might have stumbled against North Carolina. We'll tell you what they did. According to ESPN, available now. 
Suzuki, proud presenting sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. During the Suzuki year-end clearance, get zero down. Zero percent financing for five years. And now, for a limited time, you'll also get $1,000 customer cash for the best price all year on the hot new Aereo. The XL7 SUV and every O2 model. Every Suzuki also comes with America's best warranty, making Suzuki America's best value. Hurry in before the Suzuki year-end clearance is over. Yeah, yeah. I'm on a 10 o'clock flight. Business trip, huh? Remember, you can achieve success anywhere. For example, I've called touchdown passes in all these cities. <clears throat> Jerry, but I've thrown touchdown passes in all of these cities. I was here first, Steve. So? You backup quarterback? Butterfingers? You pretty boy. Slow poke. Wherever business takes you, Courtyard has what you need to be successful. Sports analyst. Step away from the vehicle. Now make three stays and earn two free nights. Call 1-888-MARRIOTT. Courtyard, your Marriott awaits. Oh. The Atlantic Coast Conference has dazzled fans for 50 years. For most of its storied history, the ACC has had an invaluable teammate, television. Since its first broadcast in 1957, TV has brought the ACC into the living rooms of sports fans throughout America and turned watching a great conference into a national pastime. Happy golden anniversary to the ACC and best wishes for continued success and excellence. This month on Showtime, Bang Bang, You're Dead. A powerful Showtime original picture event. A subject so important, a film so controversial, you'll only see it on Showtime. The places other networks won't go. Things they will never show. Limits they will never test. Daring to do great TV. Showtime, no limits. Announcing the package sale at Value City Furniture. Great looks at tremendous prices. Give your home a fresh, contemporary look with our new Spectrum living room. Choose one color or mix and match to suit your style. Your choice of sofa and love seat for only $799. And how about this fresh, casual look for your bedroom? A five-piece all-wood package in a warm pine finish. Just $699. High quality, low prices, great values. Value City Furniture. You just can't do any better. Scott McBrien getting it done with his feet and with his arm, and Maryland up 16 to 9 at Clemson as we return to college game day halftime report. Matt Weiner, Mark May, for as long as the power permits <laughs> here in the studio. Good games today. Not uh, any inter top 25 games, but many games with BCS repercussions and conference title repercussions, as well as bowl tie ins. Among those, USC and Arizona State Trojans still have a tough schedule down the stretch. Still have that Notre Dame game waiting for them later on. Tonight, they get Arizona State at home. Carson Palmer, the freshman Mike Williams, stretches in for the touchdown. SC up 7 0. Early second quarter, 10 3 game. It's the Sultan. Sultan McCullough, 50 yards and more. It's the Trojans down within scoring position. Brett Hudson with the touchdown saving tackle. That leads to this. Palmer, Alex Holmes, Ugh. just gets over. SC up 17-3. They lead 20 to 10 at halftime. Carson Palmer, uh, among the folks who have sort of leapt onto Heisman lists of late, and he has really gotten it going the last few days. And here's what Palmer has done lately over his last three games. How about 13 touchdowns to two interceptions? Absolutely perfect numbers for any quarterback in any league. And I think he's the reason why USC has really gotten better over the last three or four weeks. The quarterback play, not just the play, but the leadership that Carson Palmer's provided. Well, and, and the knock on him has been uh, inconsistency, but when he's hot, obviously he gets it done as well as anybody out there. Seneca Wallace, one of the quarterbacks who was on the Heisman list, has sort of slipped off lately, and he and his Cyclones taking on Colorado. Robert Hodge. Nice pitching catch. D.J. Hackett on the other end, 10-7. Seneca Wallace goes back in the pocket. Great protection. Throws the ball deep and long to Lance Young. In for the touchdown. Back come the buffs. Hodge. He'll chuck it down. But look at Hackett. Oh, that's pretty. Great leaping grab. Inside the five. Led to a Chris Brown five-yard touchdown. 17-14. See you at the half. And Brown. Fumbles it. Jermaine Phillips scoops it up for the Cyclones. Headed the other direction. And Willie, no, he won't. But Cyclones punch it in nonetheless. And we have a 20-20 game. 
Brown, by the way, 127 yards already today, so he has regained the National Rushing League. He lost to Larry Johnson earlier this afternoon, and you see for the season more than 1,600 yards rushing already. So let's talk about Heisman a little bit. Larry Johnson, if you haven't heard, another record-setting day, 327 yards rushing today. He's on a lot of people's lists. Cliff Kingsbury threw himself literally into a lot of lists. On my Where list do you stand also. right now? Well, it's a very fluid situation. If you know earlier in the shows, my list may have changed from some players to other players, and it's changed again because the reason why, nobody's the clear front-runner in the Heisman Trophy race thus far, but players have played their way in. And you look at Brad Banks, he's the hottest quarterback right now that people are talking about. Chris Brown leads the nation in rushing, but Larry Johnson quietly from Penn State. Each and every week he gets better and better a huge day. Cliff Kingsbury, remember that name. If he can beat Oklahoma next week and put up numbers like this, he'll be invited to New York. And always Brian Leftwich, Byron Leftwich, and Willis McGahee from Miami. But for Willis McGahee, without him, Miami wouldn't be undefeated this year because he's virtually kept his team undefeated by stepping up each and every game that they had close games. You look at the Florida State game when they had to rush the ball and put points on the board. Against West Virginia, they had to put points on the board. They turned to the running game, and that's Willis McGahee for Miami. And likewise, Cliff Kingsbury was not on a lot of lists, but 473 yards against the number two pass defense yeah. in the country you know, really lends some credibility to that campaign. Not only that, he has 41 touchdown passes. If you're just talking pure numbers, 41 touchdown passes and he has a game left. You have to put him on that list. And next week is the biggest game of his career. If he can step up on the stage and do what he did today, next week, without a doubt, people are going to be mentioning Cliff Kingsbury with every other name for the Heisman Trophy. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with it. No, he deserved being it. He in, earned it. With your list being in flux, that's the way it should be. We go performance by performance. Back to the ACC. Florida State and a struggling North Carolina team. Adrian McPherson, two. And Quan Bolden. And there goes, there goes Anquan. You know, it worked so well the first time you took a 10 nothing lead with that touchdown to Anquan Bolden. Why don't you do it again? All that again. Adrian McPherson, two. Anquan Bolden. Oh, nice leaping grab. 17 up in Florida State. Third quarter, 27 game. McPherson, two. Anquan Bolden. And Quan Bolden. 120 yards receiving, three touchdowns. 26-7 then, final 40-14. McPherson, four touchdowns on the day. That gives him a dozen touchdowns and just one interception since he took over. It's going to get a lot harder for Chris Rich to find his way back into that Florida State lineup. NC State and Virginia. That's a Cavalier. That's what that is. <laughs> NC State, they've lost two straight coming into Charlottesville. Haven't lost three straight since 97, but they got to play some defense. They're the white jerseys. Matt Schaub, Ottawa Anderson, 7 0. Phillip Rivers decides to go ahead and run it in. PAT, no good. 14 9 game. Late in the game, off a turnover. We'll pack in another chance. Rivers on fourth and long. Get down. No. Wasn't quite knocked down. It was bobbled and juggled and deflected, but not caught. And Virginia wins it 14 9. Three straight losses for the Wolfpack, who still have not won 10 games in the program's history. Jericho Cotri, nice effort, a losing effort, 108 yards receiving. Georgia Tech gets a win, 17-2 on Duke. They've won 12 of their last 13 against the Dukies and eight straight in that series. Well, Ohio State, could they escape again? They needed extra time in Champaign. BCS coming up. Hi, I'm Emmett. And I'm not. We may not look it. But we're a lot alike. We both like giving back to the community. And we're both considered quite stylish. And we both believe that phone service should be simple. Oh, yeah, like 10, 10, 220. It's cheap whether you use it a little or a lot. 99 cents for all calls up to 20 minutes. And there are no monthly commitments. So you only pay for the calls you make. So, what do you think of the shirt? Too loud. What do you think of the shirt? Dial 10, 10, 220. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Gonna make you Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 90 health club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. 
Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure and check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web today. What the new Bowflex for ultimate results. Sour note so far for the Clemson folks down to touchdown to the red hot Maryland Terps at halftime in South Carolina. Well, the game is much interest around the country. Ohio State into Illinois to take on the Illini. They have not been spectacular on the road. Game tied at 16 at the end of regulation. Maurice Hall up the gut. Touchdown, extra point good. Ohio State up 23-16. The Illini come back. John Future. Straight up. Aaron Moorhead, but wait a minute. Called out of bounds. Third down. Future. Walter Young. Touchdown. Another great effort. No. Juggled. So, last chance in overtime. Future batted down at the line of scrimmage, and the Buckeyes hang on to win yet again. 23-16. Remain unbeaten. Of course, that sets up the game with Michigan at the end of the season. Next week, win gets them to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. That's five wins this season by touchdown or less. That's a new school record. That is a pig. It's a big bronze pig. It's Floyd of Rosedale to be exact. Iowa, Minnesota winner gets it. Fred Russell doing his part. Nine yards, touchdown, seven up in Hawkeyes. And Brad Banks, he's one of your Heisman guys. Absolutely, and this is why he fights to get in the end zone. Won't be denied. He scores a touchdown. Iowa up 21-7. He does it with his arm. Maurice Brown. Wide open, gets him. And Kirk Ferentz carried off the field. He wasn't the only one carried off. The Iowa fans taking the road goalpost down as well. It's a little change in protocol. Fred Russell, career high in rushing yards, 194. It's his eighth 100-yard game of the season. Iowa, they're done. 11 and one, first 11 win season in school history. A perfect 8-0, perfect Big Ten season for the first time since 1922. Texas, very much in the BCS picture. On the road against Texas Tech, Chris Sims. B.J. Johnson, 84 yards, pitch and catch, good for a half dozen. Texas up 38-35. This was the star, though, Cliff Kingsbury. To Torian Henderson, the Torian, breaking tackles. Red Raiders back up by four. Sims, 528 to play, and he's picked off by Ryan Aycock. And Tech holds on to win it, 42-35. Cliff Kingsbury, a gargantuan day. 473 yards passing, six, count them, six touchdowns. How many is that for the year? 41. How about 41 touchdowns? Oklahoma, no trouble with Baylor. Kevin Steele's final home game with the Bears, 49-9. Quentin Griffin, 152 yards rushing. Georgia, a win at Auburn gives them the SEC East title, their first trip to the SEC championship game, but it was not easy. Third quarter, Jason Campbell fakes the handoff, sees the open field, and taking himself 21 yards. Tigers up 21-10. Could they hold the lead? David Green. Bubbles. Sees end zone. Loses ball. John Stinchcomb is there to fall. You love it with the big guy. Absolutely. Offensive lineman. His first touchdown of his career. Georgia pulls within four. Green then to the end zone. Michael Johnson is there for the catch. Touchdown. And Georgia. A little like Ohio State. They don't get a lot of respect, but they keep winning football games. This was a good road win. Ronnie Brown, 124 yards as he continues to get it done in place of Carnell Williams. But Georgia wins it 10, or excuse me, 24-21. They're now 10-1 and 7-1. And, and, and uh, Georgia's headed to the SEC championship game. Meanwhile, Texas Tech, believe it or not, still has a chance to wind up in the Big 12 title game. Not only a chance, all they have to do is win. They've got one more game to win against Oklahoma in Norman next week. If they win that game, they win the Big 12 South. I think that is very important because everyone talked about Texas the entire season. They're ranked number three. They were knocked off today. And we talked about Oklahoma. They're the number one team in the land for a while. No one's mentioned the Red Raiders of Texas Tech and Cliff Kingsbury for the Heisman. Those two go together synonymously, but Cliff Kingsbury leads this team. There's no doubt about it. People always question, well, it's a short pass and a long run and a dink and dunk pass system forget that they win ball games they stepped up today won a huge game i like the way texas tech is playing and this could be the story of the year if they go to norman and upset oklahoma in norman this would be the story of the year texas tech going to the big 12 championship game well it's just it's it's bizarre if you think about the big 12 and the reputation of the big 12 over the year you talk about defense you talk about running the football and this is the exact opposite of that dink, tech doesn't dunk, stop dink, anybody and they win. throw it about 60 yeah. times a game we're back with more after this
If these walls could talk, they'd say use the new straight line laser level. Just level, set, fire, and get everything laser straight. Straight line, bring your work to a new level. At BASF, we don't make the snowboard, we make it stronger. We don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Red is the color of passion. My hot magma clipper cover is red. He's in the hot tub with a girl. And they're naked. You do the math. What does your phone say about you? An Energizer car battery gets you going like a strong cup of coffee. An Energizer car battery is like a double espresso. Energizer keeps you going. Energizer, the grande of car batteries. Pet, Pet boys, we're, we're car, car people. people. Almost overnight, the University of Maryland has arrived. And now that we're here, we're getting out there in big ways. Today, we're the team leader on a NASA mission to study the heart of a comet. We just opened a dazzling new performing arts center. Half of our freshmen ranked in the top 10% of their graduating class. And then there's the football thing, which makes all of us wonder, what's next month going to be like? Announcing the package sale at Value City Furniture. Great looks at tremendous prices. Give your home a fresh, contemporary look with our new Spectrum living room. Choose one color or mix and match to suit your style. Your choice of sofa and love seat for only $799. And how about this fresh, casual look for your bedroom? A five-piece all-wood package in a warm pine finish. Just $699. High quality, low prices, great values. Value City Furniture. You just can't do any better. You'll be fired up, too, because for 30 years, Tony Romas has been serving up the best flame-grilled ribs in America. Now, for a limited time, Tony Romas Endless Slab, all-you-can-eat ribs for one great price. From Anchorage to Miami, Tony Romas is famous for ribs. Tony Romas, famous for ribs. Colorado State last unbeaten in the Mountain West Conference and looks as though they will remain that way up 42-14 in the third quarter. Bradley Van Pelt having himself a game. Bowling Green about set to fall out of the top 25. Losing big to South Florida. The Bulls up 26-7. Josh Harris 62 yards and a touchdown. If you're looking for Sports Center tonight, ESPN2 is the place for it. Kevin Frazier and Rich Eisen will be here for Sports Center after the game. Terps, one of the hottest teams in the country, up by seven, back to Clemson. Let's see. Perfect. Which brings us to Mr. Friday. What is that? Atmosphere? And those double-glazed baby back ribs. And wherever you tense. The Friday's take on dinner? Tonight, dig into our mouth-watering, double-glazed baby back ribs. Glaze twice for a one-of-a-kind Friday's taste. Eat what you love, love where you eat at Friday's. And now the end is near, and so I face the final bidding. From A to Z, from there to here, I shop the world all while I'm sitting. Brand new and collectibles, thank you. On the information superhighway, you'll save more and find things like this when you do it eBay. Digital Star Wars, digitally filmed, digitally mastered, the first perfect clone on DVD. Star Wars Episode 2, only today on DVD. You know the clean feeling the dentist gives you? Now you can get it between visits. Introducing the newest Crest Spin Brush, Spin Brush Pro. It spins and goes up and down. For that dentist clean feeling, satisfaction guaranteed. The Crest Spin Brush Pro. And we're back at Clemson University. At Memorial Stadium, Frank Howard Field. I'm Jeff Hollinger along with Todd Christensen. Maryland up by a touchdown on Clemson. I think of all the thoughts that you have at halftime, you have to wonder about the whole issue of clock management with Maryland and if 
that will bear some very bitter fruit for them here in the second half. Well, certainly they could have bled the time off at the end as we talked about it, but then when you get the Hail Mary, the flute play, three points that really Clemson didn't deserve, that could be an instigating point for Clemson as they receive the ball here in the second half. Scott McBride has been terrific also for Ralph Friedgen in the first half. He has been Mr. Offense. Strong of arm and running the ball very well also. Here's Nick Novak as we begin the second half. Glad to have you along. Derek Hamilton is the deep man and he will bring it. He has some room. Hamilton trying to turn it out but there is a penalty marker back at the 14 yard line of Clemson. And there is that sense. You don't have to be a great knower of football to understand that that one is coming back after a 34-yard return. Well, right at the end of the play, you saw some people on the sidelines for Clemson also beefing about a face mask, but evidently not. It is going to come back, and that's going to be a problem for field position for Clemson. As far as the first half goes, let's check out the ESPN2 game track. Scott McBride is the man. Well, he has certainly been the star in the first half for Maryland. Their leading passer and receiver. And what a beautiful throw he had here. Play action to Jafar Williams down the middle of the field. Puts it right on the numbers. Now on the other side of the ball, the thing that really ignited tons in there was Miller's 76-yard kickoff return that preceded one of the field goals for Aaron Hunt. So Clemson will get the football here to begin the third quarter. Down by a touchdown, 16-9. to As far as offense goes in the first half, 226 yards for Maryland, 139 for Clemson. Operating out of the shotgun now is Charlie Whitehurst, the redshirt freshman. And the handoff is to Bernard Rambert. Let's go downstairs to Stacy Pate. Stacy. Well, guys, I spoke with both, co both coaches at the half, and Coach Friedgen told me they may have the advantage on the scoreboard, but that's absolutely not enough. The defense needs to get it done, period, and keep them out of the end zone. Coach Bowden said Charlie Whitehurst started out just a little bit shaky, but he feels he's overcome that. He's ready to play in this half. All right, Stacy, with the ball at the eight-yard line. It is second and ten. Whitehurst firing and it is complete. The catch is made up to the 17, maybe the 18 yard line by Jackie Robinson again of eight. Statistically, certainly Maryland has been dominant. Although that, that Hail Mary pass at the end is a little bit deceptive because that added the 40 plus yards to make it less than two to one in terms of margin. Ten more plays for Maryland. And you would figure the base on the stats would be ahead by more than the seven points that they are. Instead of the Hail Mary, now you just say the LSU. Ah, I think we all understand. Ball is at the 18. They need to get one yard. Play action. Whitehurst coming near side. And it's incomplete. Ben Hall, the tight end, trying to make a leaping grab on the football. Incomplete. Whitehurst now 9 of 14, 104 yards. I, I, you know what? That, that call is not what you want third and one. And, and there was a little bit of confusion, I think. Charlie Whitehurst looked over to the side and he saw but the down marker said one, but it was actually third and one. And I don't know if he was paying attention to that or not because, a lot, you know, that corner route downfield like that, particularly with the field position they had, they'd be better off just to run the ball and get the first there, fourth, fourth and so short. Win cop, the punter, his fourth. He has averaged 40.7, and Steve Suter is deep, so Maryland should have some pretty good field position. High floating punt that's short and taking the Maryland bounce and diving on the football Clemson may come up with the football they do the Tigers have it Ty Hill was trying to bring the football in but was unsuccessful now the reason if you're wondering why was Suter chasing after the ball like that the reason was is because he felt like it hit the butt of one of his players watch right here now watch he thinks it hits the leg he thinks it hits the leg of his player now technically that ball should if it did not hit the back of the leg of the player, that ball should be dead. Take a look. Does it hit number eight? If it doesn't, then the bat by number 59 for Clemson. In this case, that, that would be Khalid Vaughn. If indeed that is the case, it should be Maryland's ball at that point where Vaughn touched it. And you see the turnovers tonight. Did it hit the butt of Mario Merrill's? And it did not. That's a good call by the official. Very difficult to tell as far as our angle goes on. Now, Bob wants the explanation. He's assuming, like everybody else in the stands, that the ball did indeed hit a Maryland player, in this case, Merrill's. Now, watch. 
Watch Merrill's. Does it hit any white shirts right there? And they're right there. You no. can see Khalid Vaughn hits the ball in the air. Right there, that's where the ball should be dead. The ball should be dead right there. It should be at the 46-yard line, not the 41. Continue to talk about it. Now watch. Watch if it hits. Does it hit? It doesn't. It doesn't look like it. It does. doesn't hit him in the knee. And right there when the ball is hit up in the air. I'm sorry, that was J.J. Howard. It wasn't Khalid Vaughn. Once that ball is hit right there, that ball is dead. Now, the reason I'm so verbose about this is this. During the year, you and I have done a couple of Big Ten games. Right. And we know that the, the officials there were much maligned by Joe Paterno, among others, excoriated, in fact, in the press. The officials in this case got it exactly right. Well, they don't like it here in Death Valley. And over the years, most of those calls have gone Clemson's <laughs> way, quite honestly. But not this time. Well, Tommy Tommy Bowden is living, but when he gets a chance to if he gets a chance to see this particular tape, as opposed to his own tape, he'll get a chance to see that the ball did not hit a Maryland player. In this case, Mario Merrill's. Do you like replay? Do you like it in the college game? The problem is, is that the be I'd like replay, say, if it was four years from now. I went through replay as a player, and I absolutely hated it. Because what happened is you had the people on the field that played the role. Ultimately, what they ended up doing is they played the role of, of being disenfranchised. They felt like they had Big Brother upstairs to rectify every error. Decide for yourselves at home. Watch the ball. Now watch, does the ball change? Right there you can see, does the ball change? In other words, does it change its trajectory or does it change the way it spins? Clearly it does not. And so the officials are exactly right. Well, it has brought this big crowd to life in Death Valley. So Maryland with the football in Clemson territory. Both receivers to the right. In Monroe and Harrison. The handoff is the down. Spinning and churning. Picking up three yards. It'll bring up second and seven. As the Clemson defense is there to meet him up front. It's incumbent here on Leak and Thomas and the defensive leaders for Clemson. They cannot have the attitude that we just got robbed. Because if they have that attitude, if I'm Maryland right here, I go up top. Because they're on their heels. They feel like things didn't go their way. Clemson's defense has to rise up here. Harrison left, Monroe to the right. They need to get to the 31 for the first down. Here's the throw, it's deflected, and diving is Maurice Fountain. Clemson has come up with the football. It came off Fountain's hands and into the waiting arms of Rodney Thomas, who made a great play on the football. Just as we talked about the need for Clemson to rise up, they do exactly that. A little hesitation on the part of McBrien. There's the hesitation. He throws it. Fountain bounces it up in the air, and Thomas, paying attention, lays out. It's a good thing, really, that he didn't, he didn't collide in that case with Eric Sampson, the outside backer. Actually, he does. Look at Sampson, 38, make an attempt. Bang! That's head-to-head. -head. Somebody's going to be fine. Oh, no, that's right. This is college football. It's okay. <laughs> Thomas has been making plays all year for Clemson. Ball at the Clemson 46. Down by a touchdown to the Tigers. Whitehurst. Derek Hamilton on the reverse. Down. And Maryland territory at the 45-yard line. And it's again of about nine. E.J. Henderson is there. That play has been a staple for Clemson coming into this game. 17 carries for 177 yards is Hamilton. And basically on that speed reverse. E.J. Henderson certainly makes the play, but it's downfield after a nine-yard game. And Charlie Whitehurst with a football. And let's see if he has enough for the first down. It looked for all intents and purposes that E.J. Henderson was taking a break there. Did you see him jump over the top of the line a la LeVar Arrington? Holy cow, 42. Like your body more than that. So second and one, and they'll... 
bring out the chains here to see just how close it is. Stretch it out. Clemson says yes. They have it. The first down. Another look at Henderson. Well, again, you know, six foot two, 250 pounds. They're going to hurry up, and it looks like Maryland isn't doing what they're supposed to. Now, Henderson looks and says, oh, okay, you think you're going you're gonna to beat me to the punch? <laughs> Over the top showed his vertical, but he couldn't get a piece of Whitehurst, and certainly not enough to negate a first down. The ball at the 44-yard line. Shotgun formation for Charlie Whitehurst. And the handoff. It is to Ty Hill. And Hill with a pickup of about four. We'll call it second and six. Hill with a great speed for Clemson. Wrapped up by Leon Joe, his fourth tackle. Joe from Clinton, Maryland. 6 I'm a little 225 pounds. I'm a little bit confused. They have Curry down as their fastest player, but according to the statistics that I read, Hill, number eight, ran a 10 200 meters in high school. Fast. No kid. Ball at the 41 yard line. Whitehurst wants to throw. Going long downfield and incomplete. Trying to get the ball to Arise Curry, but Dominique Foxworth was closing in a hurry and had the good defense. We talked about Foxworth and his ability leading the ACC in passes defense. However, I don't know about Curry's effort on the ball. It appeared to me that maybe, watch right at the end of the play, where's the ball? Oh, I don't know. He didn't even extend his arms. Looked to me like number one, if he'd have laid out or done something, might have had a shot at it. And, of course, Whitehurst knows this is a pretty good ball. But, uh, a nice throw. Clemson now with the third down. They're two for eight on third down conversions in this ball game. Across the middle, and it's incomplete. A little too much for Derek Hamilton at the 30-yard line. Denard Wilson, the strong safety on the coverage. A good job for Maryland. It really was. In that situation, Whitehurst has what he wants. He's got the man coverage on the crossing route underneath. But Wilson is able to stay with the receiver. That, that, that's a poor move on the part of Hamilton. Once again, it appeared that was also a catchable ball. Steve Suda is deep, hovering around his 10. And Wynn Kopp is the punter. Waiting on the snap. And this is not a very good punt. And it will go out of bounds at the 18-yard line. That's where Maryland will get the ball. And they have the lead. Guess who? Hello? Hello, Mr. Storm. The dreaded telemarketer. No, it's strong. Telemarketers got your number? Get the telezapper. And soon those annoying calls will just about stop altogether. Available at stores everywhere. Become a member of Starwood Preferred Guest at Weston.com. Stamps at supermarkets. Stamps by phone. Stamps online. Stamps at ATMs. Along with your local post office, wherever you find this symbol, you'll find stamps. Conveniently located. Brought to you by the United States Postal Service. Well, you killed it. I didn't mean to. Guess you didn't mean to use that cheapo antifreeze either, huh? I just thought... No, you didn't. Because if you had, you would have thought about the exclusive Presto Dual Action Formula. You were just thinking about all those pennies you were going to save. Which you can now use to call a dough truck. It's called Presto Season for a reason. Can you put the top up? You want a ride in the tow truck? In 1954, in Junction, Texas, Paul Bear Bryant put 115 football players through hell. We're going to work now. You damn near killed my friend! He ain't quit. But those who survived lived to become champions. One heartbeat. That is what we've been looking for ever since we arrived. ESPN Original Entertainment presents The Junction Boys. Saturday, December 14th, 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Back in the upstate of South Carolina, Clemson tonight. 
trailing Maryland by a touchdown. The Terrapins with the football. They'll go with three receivers on first down for the 18-yard line. Chris Downs for no gain. Let's go to Matt Winder in our studio. All right, Jeff. Colorado trying to shake off a pesky Iowa State outfit and claim the Big 12 North title. Robert Hodge rolling out. Got Derek McCoy in for the touchdown. Bucks up 27-20. Arizona State and USC. Trojans leading by seven. Make it 14. Justin Fargus does the honors 27-13. Justin Fargus, who's his dad? Uh, Come on, television of the 70s, go! Uh, second down, let me think about it. Here is the handoff. Running room for Chris Downs. And Downs cutting to the outside and dropped down at the 47-yard line by Brian Nance. It is a gain of 28 yards and a first down. If Downs' ankle is hurting him here in the third quarter, he didn't show any of it on that sprint. Downs, to, there's the pull. And of course, the fullback leads the way. Downs, now this is interesting as he cuts to the outside, starts to pick up a couple of blockers, but he runs out of real estate. And he knows that he could have got just a little bit more out of that. But number 20 has got to be happy with that, his longest run of the night. He's got seven carries for 46 yards. On first down now from the 47 of the Terrapins. And here is Downs again. And this time, not much there. He gets to midfield. Khalid Vaughn on the stop. It's a game of three. We send warm wishes to the men and women of the U.S. Army's 5th Corps, stationed all across Europe. The 5th Corps is watching us right now on the American Forces Network. Words are inadequate to express the gratitude that I feel. Thank you, gentlemen. It is Military Appreciation Night here in Clemson, South Carolina. We have a break. Who was it? You Just know what? You're going to have to help fun. me on the on the 70s television okay. quiz. If, if, if there's not a prize, I'm not going to play. His name is Antonio. His father's name was Antonio, and he played what role? In Starsky and Hutch. Come on. I was not a Starsky and Hutch guy. I was oh, more please. of a... Uh... You were watching that. <laughs> you look, come on. You not. look just like Hutch. You look just like him. <laughs> come on. You don't remember? I, Nobody remembers Huggy I, Bear? I didn't watch much Starsky and Hutch. Huggy I, Bear. I'm not old enough. Remember Huggy Bear? Huggy Bear. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> I was more into Smokey and the Bandit there in the uh, 70s. You know. Oh, I see. You didn't watch television. I get it. <laughs> yeah, right. The injured players, Matt Crawford, the right tackle for Maryland. Looking at Ralph Regan, speaking of not watching television, I'm always reminded of the story of, of Dick Vermeil when John Travolta was doing a movie in Philadelphia. <laughs> they caught him in the hot tub, and he says, who's that guy? <laughs> Movies. Second and seven from midfield. Four wideouts now for McBrien coming to the near side. The catch is made by Suter and trying to turn the ball upfield. He now is in Clemson territory. It is a gain of six. I love the line from Ralph Friedgen earlier in the week as his Terrapins were ranked 19th in the latest poll. He said, you know, uh, we're better than that. We're, we're a football team that, that really is worthy of a higher ranking than that. How many coaches in your long life have you heard that have said the opposite of, ah, oh, we're not a very good now, football why player? why is it then, in the course of the conference call, when I asked him that very question, I said, so you guys are better than this? And his response was, oh, I don't get into the rankings. <laughs> well, okay, Ralph. <laughs> All right, it's third down and short. Less than one. Handoff is to the fullback. And James Lynch has it up for the Maryland first down. Well, you mentioned Ralph Friedgen and what he has done at Maryland. And don't forget that this guy is one of the all-time great offensive coordinators. He has an interesting piece to his resume, an offensive coordinator for both a national champion at the collegiate level and, a, and an offensive coordinator for a Super Bowl team, the San Diego Chargers, back in 1994. And if there's a more popular guy on campus at College Park, would it have to be Gary Williams? <laughs> I'm just, you didn't beat me by much on that one. <laughs> The ball is at the 42-yard line. They need to get to the 32 for a first down. Play action, McBride with time, leaping, throwing, and completing to the tight end is Jeff Dugan. And Dugan has a pickup of 11. It's another Maryland first down. John Leak on the tackle, the left linebacker making the stop. He's six foot tall and he's only 180 pounds, but a left-handed number seven, and that play action right there, what does that remind you of? 
Come on, Jeff, what does it remind you of? You're, you're, you know what? You're left quizzing handed. me a lot tonight. Number seven, left-handed, quarterback. Boomer Esiason, Thank you. of course. Exactly. Look at the play action, how he ducks his head and pulls it in, just like Boomer You know, I, I want to please you with the proper answer to these questions. You know, I'm getting a lot of quizzes tonight. Well, thank goodness. Thank goodness you got <laughs> Bill and Rick next to you to feed you the answers, <laughs> doggone it. Come on, fellas. That is a no-brainer with Boomer Esiason. Well, I know, exactly, but it is interesting. He must have studied the film because he's, he, it's almost identical the way he puts the hand out, ducks his head, really makes an effort in terms of play action. See, I, I was also thinking maybe of Mike Vick, who wears number seven, who's very oh, good on the run as well. It plays about two hours to the south here of the stadium. A great runner, but not, not necessarily a play action guy in the mold of Boomer or this young man. You haven't seen him this matter, season, Rex have you? Kern, or for that Rex matter, Rex Kern Jack from Ohio Mildred. State. Jack Mildren from Oklahoma, right. 1971. You're doing a lot right. better. That's better. You're doing a lot better. And not two for four. Steve Davis? No more Starsky and Hutch references, though. <laughs> Didn't watch it. I was a man of taste. Oh, it tastes all you <laughs> Second and short. Less than one. And receivers right and left. It's an eye formation now from Maryland. On top by a touchdown with Clemson. And the handoff again to the first down machine, James Lynch. He does it again. And he gets to the 25. He needed one. He picks up seven. That's a first down. Tackle by Rodney Thomas. Number five. You know what? Number five makes you look that much shorter. Look at the pads sticking out. Five foot 11, 271 pounds. Now here's one for you. Remember George Woo Woo Woodard? You nod your head. You don't remember. Look at that big body. It's another one. I tell you what, that's a lot of courage right there to step up and make that stick on that 270 pounder by Eric Meek. Downs gets the call. He's to the 24 yard line. It's a gate of one. Sean Leak is there making the hit. I mentioned that because I remember he was the original 270 pound fullback. And of course, when you have that single digit, it makes that body stand out that much more. I'm telling you, you know what? I don't have any numbers. Doc got it. I wish I'd have been paying attention. That might be. His numbers, his numbers in the weight room have to be ridiculous. His 5'11", 270, that's a perfect physique for powerlifting. All right, second and nine for Maryland. They have had the football for a while here in the third quarter. Play action for McBride. Penalty marker goes down and throwing the ball out of bounds in the zip code of Jafar Williams was McBrien. And let's get the call here. Applause from the Maryland offensive lineman, Eric Dumas. Offside on the defense. Five yards, repeat second down. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN2. Evan Coburn and the Mountaineers face Lee Suggs in the 13th ranked Hokies live from Blacksburg. Then on Thursday night at 7.30 Eastern Time on ESPN, the Pittsburgh Panthers ended Virginia Tech's perfect season. Now they look to repeat that feat against number one ranked Miami on College Football Thursday presented by Circuit City. We were at that game last week in the Carrier Dome. Those numbers are staggering. Even a week later, you still look at it and say, man, oh man, what a performance. Single best receiving performance I've seen all year. On second and four, McBride will keep the football skipping and dancing. Trying to get enough for the first down, it's a gain of six. Rodney Thomas hit him low. It's his fifth tackle of the ball game, and that will move the chains. Another first down for Maryland, but McBrien is limping. I think that's no, no, because no. of He's his the, shoe, yeah, right? No, yeah. Okay. You say now all the Maryland faithers are going, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, he's all right. So I'm so impressed with what Ralph Friedgen uh, Charlie Taff and Michael Kane have done with this offense. They've done such a great job of mixing things up. Just keeping Clemson's defense completely off balance. New quarterback is Chris Kelly on first down with the ball at the 14-yard line. And Kelly will hand it off to down to a shoulder that's tackle. That's a penalty. That's not a shoulder. Is that a face mask? <laughs> Rodney Thomas. Maybe initially got the, uh, the shoulder pad at the neck, but it is the face mask. And that will help Here a Maryland. Beauty. Here a beauty. It's all face <laughs> mask. And you can tell by the emphatic way that the <laughs> official punches the arms and reveals that it is a personal foul. Our official has the voice of George C. Scott and Patton. So okay, as his, his hand slides off the shoulder, oops, I guess it didn't. Oh, personal my. foul. <laughs> Come on, Jeff, look at that. Ouch. Fortunately, this is one of the advantages, one of the good things about the youngster. Good thing about being five foot eight. If that's a six foot three inch man, that hurts to have your neck jerked around like that. I'm not saying that it's necessarily a pleasant thing for downs. But it's a good thing that he has a lower center of gravity. Three penalties against Clemson. And Maryland's been penalized three times as well tonight. 
So it'll be first and goal from the seven-yard line. Scott McBrien has his shoe back on. And he is under center. And the handoff is the Downs. And Downs is met at the five-yard line again of two. Tackled by Eric Meekins, the free safety who came up to make the hit. One of the things that's been happening on this drive, clearly, <clears throat> not only as you pointed out in the first half, Jeff, has the crowd been taken out of the game, but what Maryland is doing now is they're taking some time off the clock. Ten play drive now approaching five minutes in terms of time that they've taken away from the Clemson offense. And this will be the 11th play of the drive. Second and goal from the five-yard line. Both receivers at the top of the television set. Yard pickup. Al Troy Broderick came in, uh, came in on the blitz and makes the stop. So a, a tough call here. Not really. I think you got to throw here. I, I think you, I think you have to throw, and it's important for Clemson here to force a field goal. Down 16 to nine here in the third quarter. Elected Thomas and Lee. The linebackers who have been doing a good job. Well, this is certainly not a throwing formation, so look for some some sort of play action. McBride, play action into the end zone, and it's caught! Jeff Dugan, the tight end, makes a leaping grab on Justin Miller, a four-yard touchdown for Maryland. I'm so surprised at that for this reason. At the four-yard line, how are you going to respect play action? There's just no way they're going to run into the middle of the field there. Miller to the right of your screen. There's the play action. Sure enough, it draws up the two inside backers. Miller a little bit late. Let's give credit to Dugan. He jumps over the top of Miller, able to envelop the ball over the smaller Miller, and the result is six points for the Terrapins. Nick Novak with a point after attempt, and this one is good. He missed one in the first quarter. But Maryland grows their lead on Clemson, 23-9. to Coming up, we will hear from Charlie Whitehurst talk no about problem. his... Hello? Hi. Hi. Let's play the stranger. Okay. When someone gets home tonight, someone should be wearing a naughty French maid's outfit, a blonde wig, and holding a six-pack of Bud Light. Me like you, the stranger. Oh, you meant... For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Wow. Hello, stranger. Make it a Bud Light. Ice Age. On DVD and video, November 26th. Pet Boys ASE certified technicians can help maintain and repair your car. Before small problems get big, our technicians tell you what's wrong and fix it. No matter what you drive, come to Pet Boys for expert advice and service. Pet, Pet Boys, we're, we're car, car people. people. Introducing Morgan, Tim, Heidi, Julia, and Jay. Ready for action. And also introducing Tamira, Nikki, RJ, Ryan, and Christina. On your marks, let's play Family Fleece. Name one gift that drives girls wild. Leopard print pullovers. They're perfect for girls and baby. Survey says performance fleece leopard print pullovers. Meow. Performance fleece leopard print pullovers are just 14 to 16.50 for girls and baby girls. Wardrobe courtesy of Old Navy. College basketball on ESPN. The new season kicks into gear with the Owens Corning preseason NIT. Begins Monday at 7 on ESPN2. ESPN2's College Football Saturday Night. Brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. And by Star Wars Episode 2. Get the first perfect clone on DVD. Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, available now. Well, it's been 17 years since Maryland picked up a victory in Death Valley, but they are looking pretty good right now. On top, 23 to 9 as the rain begins to fall again in Clemson, South Carolina. It has been a very, very wet day in the upstate. Nick Novak kicking off. 
And it's a driving kick, taking Justin Miller back to the one. And Miller spun down at the 33-yard line. Let's go to Matt Weiner in our studio for an update. Hi, Jeff Colorado, inching closer to the Big 12 North title, Seneca Wallace. It's a couple plays after Colorado fumbled it. Wallace coughs it up, and look what Medford Moore found. He'll go 55 yards for the score. Buffs had their lead in the fourth quarter to 34-20. Colorado's become a very resourceful football team over the last few weeks. Never would have guessed that when we saw him play against Southern California in Boulder. Remember that a couple of months ago? Here is the handoff. It is to Lambert. And late penalty marker comes flying through after a gain of six. Cox on the stop, the right cornerback. That seems like that seems like a season ago. Yeah, it does. Long time ago. You mentioned that with regards to Colorado. Shows how resilient they are, though. The week after, they had to go and play UCLA in Los Angeles. At the time, UCLA was, I think, 18th ranked. And they went and spanked him. Brown had about 160-some yards and three touchdowns. And ever since then, he's been on a tear. Look at the rain is coming down a little harder now. Five-yard face mask on the defense. First down. You hear the boos. I don't understand that. But that's what that's what the official was going over to see was to see as to whether or not it was a first down. So with the clock running at 449 and the ball at the 44 yard line. Shotgun formation, play action, and coming to the near side. It's Curry. And nobody faked out at all by Maryland. Let's hear from Charlie Whitehurst talking about his father, David, the NFL quarterback. Anybody can really teach you know, the physical part of playing quarterback. It's really the, the mental part, you know, having him kind of being my role model, you know, growing up and just seeing how, how tough you have to be to play this, you know, this sport. And, of course, at the quarterback position, you know, you know, mental toughness is, you know, a key. And, yeah, I think I have an advantage over some guys because of my dad. And his dad played about a half hour up the road in Greenville at Furman University. Here is Whitehurst, out of the pocket. He'll keep the football and get into Maryland territory as he is sent out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Tackled by Leon Joe. It's a gain of eight. Let's look at his father. You were a contemporary, Todd, of David Whitehurst. Whitehurst I was indeed. He played, <clears throat> played under Bart Starr at Green Bay. Came in when Lynn Dickey got hurt. There's a touchdown pass to Rich McGeorge. And now he's going to hit my buddy James Lofton right down the middle of the field, number 80 soon to be Hall of Fame wide receiver now a, now a receiver coach down in San Diego Whitehurst did indeed have some moments with the green and gold and his son has had a few over the last couple of weeks and trying to make some moments right now with a football at the 48 yard line needs to get to the 46 here on third down firing and it's complete good throw to JJ McKelvey a gain of 11 Foxworth is over there on the coverage from Maryland, but a fine job by the young quarterback from Duluth, Georgia. Especially well done, though, by McKelvey coming back to the ball on the hook route. Whitehurst sets his feet. The ball's thrown a little bit short, but McKelvey does the right thing. He comes back and able to come up with the ball. McKelvey, one of a triumvirate of receivers for Clemson, six foot four inches or taller. The ball at 37, you see the total yards, which has gone the way of the Terrapins tonight. Out of the shotgun, the handoff is to Bernard Rambert, and Rambert not finding anything inside on the Maryland defense for no gain. Jamal Cochran making the stop. A little unrest in the stands, but the reality is is that as you see the clock, there's plenty of time, and you can still establish the runner, or at worst, keep the defense honest. We'll bring up second and nine. And again, out of the shotgun is Charlie Whitehurst. And gets it away. It's complete. Uh, oh, it's incomplete. Did not hang on to the ball, Jackie Robinson. And let's go to Matt Weiner. Well, Jeff, we may have spoke too soon about that Big 12 North title because Colorado, with a 14-point lead, gives up. The Seneca Wallace touchdown run cuts it right in half. Chris Brown has left this game with a bruised sternum. Also out west, Colorado State about to go 5-0 in the Midwest or Mountain West. Rather, they're up 49-14.
Colorado State football team is a good one. We're going to see them in the Liberty Bowl. So it's third down with a ball at the 36-yard line. Third and nine. Whitehurst in trouble and hit as he gets rid of the football. It's incomplete. Fourth down. E.J. Henderson, the All-American, with the pressure on Charlie Whitehurst. Well, they came from a lot of different directions. You can see Whitehurst was a little bit confused. Blitzing from all, all areas, but of course, number 42 right on top of him. 42 has been, made so many plays, to, as we talked about, averaging nearly a dozen tackles per game. And really, I'm surprised here at fourth and nine at the 36 that they're punting. I, I thought maybe they were in four down territory, but evidently not. Wynn Cop from about midfield, he'll stand at his 49 yard line. He's averaged 35.4 tonight. And this is his sixth punt. And this is a better punt. And they will pin Maryland back at about the five yard line. It is all Maryland right now in South Carolina with Clemson. Tonight on Sports Center, overtime thriller in the Big Ten, upset in the Big 12. Iowa takes away more than a win in Minnesota, and standing tall, the unbeaten Mavs face the Nets. Sports Center after the game, ESPN 2. ABC Sunday. The only way she can save the man she loves is there an antidote? Is to kill the most dangerous man she's ever known. This needs to be handled quietly. One episode you must not miss. A new alias, ABC Sunday. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. This is the Bowflex Power Pro. Gonna make you want it. Quite possibly the most effective home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 60 health club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. You can own a Bowflex with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call and ask for a free video and brochure and check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web today. Redefine your body with Bowflex. And we are back where number 19 Maryland has the lead on Clemson. And Maryland with the football deep in the territory at the five yard line. Scooter Monroe is in motion. And here's the handoff. And not much there. Bruce Perry picks up nothing. Todd McClinton out of Columbia, South Carolina, the left tackle. It's a good sign by Clemson there. You can see all the, the hands slapping. Everybody's still excited. There's plenty of time left in this football game. Clearly, Maryland has been dominant statistically, and of course, up two touchdowns, but there is plenty of time, and Clemson needs to maintain their enthusiasm. Clemson has not defeated a ranked opponent this season. Pretty much beating the teams who figure they would beat and losing to the teams who figure they would lose to. They're 6-4, and 4-3 four, four and three in the ACC. On second and 10, out of his own end zone, McBrien and the receiver slipped and fell at the 28-yard line. Scooter Monroe, and it's incomplete. An AFC battle for survival and a chance for Raider redemption as Rich Gannon, Jerry Rice, and the league's most potent offense squares off against Tom Brady and the defending Super Bowl champions. Raiders and Patriots tomorrow on Sunday Night Football, also available on ESPN Deportes. And it all starts with NFL Prime Time, presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern Time. Third down conversions for Maryland tonight. They've been pretty good. 7 and 12. They've got a tough one. Third and 10 from their five yard line. McBrien out of the shotgun and five yards deep out of his end zone. Throwing far sideline and over the head of Latrez Harrison. It'll bring up fourth down. Jamal Fudge with a nice job. The left cornerback every step of the way. Fudge did a great job on the last two plays and now the Clemson defense did exactly what it needed to do. Win Cox punt pinned them deep and now a good opportunity if Hamilton can get a decent return for great field position. But remember Bernard is quite a punter. A career average of right around 44 yards. Look how close he stands to the line. 
Back of his end zone, Derek Hamilton at the 45-yard line now of Maryland. And gets away high, pretty good punt from his end zone. Hamilton can't field it, picks it back up. Now trying to find a lane. Take it down the middle. And a good job to the 42-yard line, 45-yard return, 45-yard punt. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now. Hi, right, Jeff. Let's get you updated on Arizona State and USC. Sun Devils trying to make something happen down two touchdowns, but Andrew Walter is picked off by Melvin Simmons. Simmons with the short run back, and that sets up Justin Fargus. Huggy Bears kid, Jeff, is in. They're up 34-13. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right, something I wanted right. to ask you about, and we'll get a chance to see, take a look at Hamilton after this play. <laughs> when was the last time you saw a punt returner that was six foot four? The one in motion. I can't remember the handoff is to Derek Hamilton. And Hamilton is tripped up at the 20 yard line. Otherwise, he was often flying for a big, big game. But it's a pickup of 15. And it comes in first down. I mentioned I mentioned this because I asked Brad Scott that very question. I said, how is it that you can run a guy like this? Because 6'4", that's just so much to tackle. Well, one of his nicknames is Noodle because he's so <laughs> difficult to get a hold of as a runner. It's a great nickname. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. Shotgun for Whitehurst across the middle. The catch is made at the 20 by Kevin Youngblood, who had to go up top to come down with a ball. The game is 7. Madhu Williams on the stick for Maryland. So a little life for the Tigers right now. Not much touch here on this throw. Youngblood has to get back past the linebacker. That's a great catch. That's a great catch to extend himself and take the hit by Williams. The six foot three, 210 pounder and still come up with the ball. Needs to get to the 17 for a first down. Clemson will go with three wide receivers. And the handoff. Doing. Great job on Rambert by Randy Starks, the defensive tackle from Waldorf, Maryland, the 300-pound sophomore. It's a loss of five. The third tackle for loss that Starks has had in this game, and he has been a problem for Clemson. They just have not been able to block him right at, right at the point of attack, just letting him go, which makes no sense, was, du was Dumas, or rather that was Gillespie who lets him go. I know what he was thinking. Sometimes you position yourself outside and you got a quick guy like that because the inside makes a play. And that's what happened in the case of Stark. Under a minute left in the third quarter. It's third and eight. Whitehurst. Ball is tipped and it's incomplete off the hands of Randy Stark. So two plays and two plays defined by Randy Starks. They can still kick a field goal. They're debating about it on the sidelines. They can still kick a field goal. And then they kick a field goal, then they're 11 points down, which is two scores. So they could still kick a field goal here. Aaron Hunt has been good for Clemson tonight. He's hit from 22. He's hit from 35. He's hit from 29. And this field goal on a wet night, the good news from the Clemson perspective is the rain has stopped and it'll be a 42-yarder. But the bad news is he's had to hurry it up because of the slow decision-making process on the sidelines. Now the play clock down to three. Here is Hunt and the kick. It is on the way. It is long enough and it is good. So Aaron Hunt in the midst of a perfect night. He is four for four and Maryland leads 23 to 12. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure or visit us on the web today. The new Bowflex for ultimate results. You in on it? Go to the new CheapTickets.com with new fair search technology for lower prices than ever. Or call now for new travel deals on cars, cruises, condos, and vacation packages. Why just save on airfares? Introducing new low hotel prices. Now save up to 70%. Cheap Tickets, the best kept secret in travel. Guys, face it. The mall is not the place where anyone is going to find the perfect gift for you. Because the best gift that your wife or your girlfriend or sister or mother could get you is a subscription to Sports Illustrated. Ah, now, 
Remember this number, 1-800-ALL-STAR. Tell them to call it. You could call. You get a free SI fleece and 2003 sports almanac with every gift subscription. They won't find it here. They'll find it here. And here. 1-800-ALL-STAR. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, Budkus finalist E.J. Henderson has been all over the field tonight making plays. He shows that he can fill the gap, make the tackles as he fills the gap. He shows also that he can run down quarterbacks, even if they are the son of NFL players. And, of course, he shows his speed from sideline to sideline, able to run down wide receivers as well. Number 42, a great player. Take a look at some of the Butkus Award finalists. I don't know, man. Those are three great players. I, I like Henderson a lot. I've, I've seen him play a couple of times this year. He is just an awesome player. That's way to be bold, Jeff. He's in our game. <laughs> I like him. I like him. <laughs> Here's Steve Souter. And Souter, oh, is hit and pushed back. Whoa! What a stop on Souter after a 22-yard return. Clemson's Leroy Hill from Haddock, Georgia, Throwing suitor backwards. Whoa! Those are the kind that you always like. They look textbook, but I can tell you right now, Suter's okay. Suter's okay. He'll catches him. His feet come up in the air. He lands on his side. Nah, he's all right. But it does look cool, doesn't it? If you're Hill, you got this one in your highlight film because you say, "Look at this. I picked. Look how strong I am. I picked him up and spiked him. Boom. Man. Pin." <laughs> Special teams are not for the faint, man. That is a big time tackle. As you mentioned, that special teams have really kept Clemson in the game up to this point. They've got four field goals, of course, special teams. They have the long kickoff return, and then, of course, the punt return to set up the last field goal. Let's go downstairs to Stacey Page right now. And guys, you were talking about E.J. Henderson. Here's a little story about him. You know, Coach Friesen, he rewards his players for their efforts in class. He lets them cut to the front of the line. Those guys who have the top GPA, they get to go to the front of the line to eat their meals. Well, Maryland has four players who already earned their bachelor's degrees. One of them, E.J. Henderson. Last week, he went to the front of the line. Well, guys with GPAs higher than uh, his got upset about that. E.J. turns around and says, guys, I'm already graduated. I think I should be at the front of the line. So now, well, all the grads lead the line going to meals. That's a great story. But then again, Stacy, take a look at that guy. Look at number 42. Who's going to argue with him anyway? If he wants to go to the front of the line of anything, he's going to do it. Like us award finalist, all the things that he has done up to this point, and as you mentioned, already graduated, Stacy did, with his degree in criminal justice last May. Number 42 is certain, you know, and I, and I know that sometimes this happens all the time when you're at home listening, you say, come on, you know, you, know, you reporters and you journalists, knock it off. Knock off the hyperbole. Number 42, I can almost guarantee it's going to be a first round pick. And Henderson is from the same hometown as Cal Ripken Jr., Aberdeen, Maryland. Another First down, the handoff is to Chris Downs, and it's a gain of three. Brandon Jamison is there for Clemson. And the clock continues to run. I, I was all I was all set to wait for that athletic analogy between Cal Ripken and E.J. Henderson, and it never came. I was waiting for both or Iron Men or both or whatever, you know. But you wanted it too bad. I saw it in your eyes. Forget it. That is the end of the third quarter. It's on to the fourth quarter. Maryland on top of Clemson. Night 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Delivered by UPS. Sometimes I feel, I don't know, like I'm trapped. What does your phone say about you? Oh, I don't know how to make anything fancy. Make something homey style. Hey. Ooh, cheese, beef, more cheese, bacon, three more strips. I declare this Extreme Burger the winner. Oh, man. You created a Whopper. For a limited time, get the new Extreme Bacon and Cheese Whopper. Juicy flame broiled beef, two kinds of cheese, four strips of bacon at Burger King now. Woo! I made a When Whopper he comes back man. here, I grab him. Go, go. Driving down the road, I spot a dead emu. Having just lost my girlfriend, I decided Mike looked nice mounted in my pool room. However, it quickly becomes apparent that he's not dead. Not at all. I was a touch worried. Until I awoke in a pool hall frequented by a local sorority. And I ask you, was this coincidence or part of something bigger? 
Have you heard the buzz? Critics are hailing Star Wars Episode 2, The New King of DVD. It's the best looking picture we have ever seen, writes the digitalbits.com. Star Wars Episode 2, a DVD that truly makes history. Own it this holiday. The cold silence of space only punctuates the feeling of death that emanates from this virtually lifeless planet. Only one thing is alive and well here. Evil. And it must be destroyed, decimated, exterminated. But first, it must be found. Maryland trying to get their ninth win of the season, trying to make it eight in a row, and trying to get their first victory here at Clemson since 1985. They're up by 11 as we begin the fourth quarter. Nick Bryan wants to throw. Rolling left. And brought down by Brandon Jamison. Picks up about four yards. It appeared he was going to get a lot more than that, but Jamison is able to run him down. The protection was outstanding. Had plenty of chances to survey the field, but a lot of that is because they were in kind of a max protection. They only had three receivers downfield, and now Clemson has to suck it up once again to see if they can deny him on third. They need to get just short of the 40-yard line on third and five. Shotgun formation. They've been fairly successful on third down. Seven of 13. McBride wants to throw. Has time. And it is intercepted. There he is again. Justin Miller, his second pickoff of the night. Scooter Monroe was the receiver out there, but the ball was not thrown either. You're exactly right, Jeff. And we talk all the time about when a quarterback wants a throwback. Not just because of the interception, but he could have had a touchdown. Gets the protection, steps up and throws. Now watch, Monroe is behind Miller. But Miller is able to make the leap. You're going to see on the receiver ISO, he's got him downfield on the corner. But they have a zone coverage. Miller does a great job of fading back. And so many times now you see defensive backs that don't make those catches. Miller impresses me not only with his athleticism, but he's got pretty good hands. Clemson down only by 11 here in the fourth quarter on first down. Whitehurst up top, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Dominic Foxworth, the left quarterback. So turnover begets a turnover. Well, evidently, Foxworth had his number. Of course, I'm not being facetious. They both wear number six. But this is, this is just a poor throw. This is a bad decision on the part of Whitehurst. This is a pop-up. The ball sitting up there. This is easy pickings for Foxworth. Probably the easiest interception that he's made all season. So Maryland gets the football back. And pretty good field position, too. 36-yard line. Michelle Whitehurst. They go with four wide receivers. Bruce Perry is the lone setback behind Scott McBride. And it is Perry who gets the call. And Perry up to the 43-yard line. Let's go to Matt Weiner after the game is seven. Jeff, party is on in Boulder, Colorado. Bobby Purify gets the handoff. It'll go for a touchdown, gives Colorado a two-touchdown lead. And then the goalposts come down. Some sort of record for goalpost destruction. We think breakaway goalposts may be at work. No confirmation yet. Colorado is worth chance. Based on the way they started the season, give uh, Coach McCartney and his staff credit. Great job. There's a couple of what am I saying? Barnett. Gary Barnett. Holy cow. Too many 70s A's references. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't say Cliff Branch had a great night. Rodney Thomas on the tackle is seven. Wow.
So the clock running here at Clemson. Maryland would love to put together a long drive here. They eat up that clock, keep the ball out of the Tigers' hands. Time of possession really is an issue now. More than seven minutes in favor of Maryland, and they've had 15 more plays. The Clemson defense has been on the field far too much. Today. Third and one. Handoff is to the fullback, trying to get the necessary yardage is James Lynch, and he has done it on three separate occasions tonight. He picks up two. Let's check out the ESPN2 game track. Scott McBrien remains one of the night's prime headlines. Well, over 200 total yards. We go back to that 54-yard scamper that he had in the first quarter, which is a big play for Maryland. And, of course, this is one of his three touchdown passes in the game. Of course, Suter has done a great job of returning the ball, both in punts and kickoffs for the Terrapins. So from the 47-yard line, the option on first down, and McBride will keep it and try to turn it upfield, and he does into Clemson territory, running into Maurice Fountain. It's a gain of four yards. We talk about the creativity of, of Friedgen and his offensive staff. Out of nowhere, now they come with the option, something we haven't seen in at least a quarter and a half, and certainly Clemson, not well prepared for it, is able to get an excellent first down play, and as you pointed out, continue to make the clock run. Monroe and Harrison are split to the left and an eye formation of Lynch and Perry behind Scott McBride on second and four. And the handoff is Perry with some running room, skipping and hopping. He has enough for the first down. It's a gain of seven. Brian Mance finally is able to run him down. But there is another first down from Maryland and an opportunity to cut into that clock some more. 17th first down of the ball game for the Terrapins. We've been heaping plaudits upon Ralph Friedgen and his staff, but something else to think about. Remember last year when they were 10 and 2, he mentioned this was a senior laden team. They lost over, I think it was over 20 seniors on that particular team. Now they only have seven senior starters, only seven. And then here they are once again with a winning streak set to play in a prominent bowl game. And here they are at the 41 yard line of the Tigers. And here is the handoff. It is to Bruce Perry. Perry right side. Perry inside the 20. And down to the 17-yard line, Eric Meekins is there. It's a pickup of 23 yards. And a triumphant Perry signals to the crowd first down. We talked about Jeff Dugan and his ability to catch the ball. He's able to hook the linebacker to the outside. That gives Perry the opportunity to get downfield. Scooter Monroe does a great job downfield blocking. That enables Perry to bounce to the outside and get the necessary yardage. Certainly, the number of runs that we have seen Perry up to this point, it would appear, I'd say, that he is in game shape now. 15 carries, 77 yards. First down from the 18-yard line. Here's the option, and the handoff is to James Lynch. Let's go to Matt Weiner in our studio right now. Hi, Jeff. Alabama and LSU over on ESPN. Neither side budging until on the option, Santonio Beard takes it in. Bama breaks the wrapper. They missed the PAT, so 6-0. SC, big winner, 34-13, now 6-1 in the Pac-10. So impressed with what Dennis Francione has done down in Alabama because they can't go to a bowl game and not eligible for any sort of postseason. Yet look at the wins that they've been piling up. That's a great job of motivating his young players. Great motivation there. Second and seven for the 15. And it's Lynch, who was in motion, who lines up on the right side. Chris Downs has checked into the ball game. McBrien coming near side, and the catch is made by Latrez Harrison, and he was juggling the football. It is incomplete. We are here at Clemson, South Carolina, Memorial Stadium at Frank Howard Field, and it is a night defined by Maryland. They're ranked number 19 in the country, trying to get their ninth win, trying to make it eight in a row, and they have really racked it up on Clemson, really statistically dominating them more than on the scoreboard tonight of only 11 points. Really have. They put together an excellent game plan, offensively and defensively. Well, you see what they've done on third down conversions. Now let's see what they do on this third and eight. From the shotgun formation. McBride will keep the ball right up the middle, and he has enough for the first down. He is knocked down at the six-yard line. It's a gain of nine. Rodney Thomas, the middle linebacker, with his ninth tackle of the evening. You see it all the time. You see that. Take a look at the tight end, Jeff Dugan, number 82, blocking, shielding the rover away from the play, enabling number seven to get upfield and get another first down. You see that play frequently. The reason it is so difficult 
It's because all he has to do is make one guy miss. So many times you don't spy the quarterback. You're busy covering other people. And then when you got a great runner back there like number seven is, it's a great addition to the offense. First and goal from the seven-yard line. A double tight end set for Maryland. And the handoff is to Downs. Downs inside the five. And he is tackled at around the three-yard line by John Leak, the left linebacker. Now, if you're Clemson, you have to be thinking on the sidelines that somebody stepped on the accelerator when it came to the time. Now, Maryland, more than 10 minutes more on the field offensively than Clemson. Certainly, we, we mentioned this earlier, Jeff, that the defense for the Tigers just has to be fatigued. Bruce Perry has checked in. Chris Downs has checked out. Second and goal from the three, the option pitch. And it is Perry who is tripped up and short of the goal line by Eric Sampson. Now let's see if the MO changes down here. Three different times now they've gone with the play action and gone into the end zone. Been successful with that twice. See if they do it again here, third and goal. Injured player is Todd McClinton from Columbia, South Carolina. 6'6", 295-pound junior, the left tackle. As they attend to him. Well, Maryland's one of the great stories here of the college football season. When you begin at one and two, and everybody assume maybe, you know, this is a young team, it's going to be a down year, beating 22 zip by Notre Dame, 37 10 by Florida State. And Ralph Friedgen said in the locker room after that game, boys, we're starting over. And they sure as heck have. You know, speaking of streaks, you were talking about at the top of the show the fact that Maryland has not won here since 1985. Since 1985, the team that has rushed for the most yards in every single game has won. In this case, Maryland is outrushing Clemson to the tune of 211 to 81. Todd McClinton is still down on the field. I, I would never say that it is a blessing when somebody gets hurt, but we talked about the fatigue factor for Clemson. If they have any shot at all remaining in this game, they have to force a field goal and stay within two touchdowns with 844 remaining. And maybe, just maybe, as they're attending to him, they can get a breather. We'll take a break as we see Tommy Bowden. Maryland with the football in the lead. Now at Zales, beautiful diamond solitaires just got more beautiful. Enjoy no interest for an entire year with no down payment necessary on our exquisite diamond jewelry. At Zales, the diamond store. The pure water filter. So easy to install and use, anyone can do it. Pure water filters. Your water should be pure. So, Vanessa, like my new phone? Sleep, huh? Yeah, Ving, it's different. All the latest features and big buttons. Uh, yeah, Ving, but don't you think it's kind of... Uh... Did I mention big buttons? <laughs> he loves his big phone, and you'll love our big Motorola deals. At Radio Shack, get the Motorola V120C for just $9.99 with activation. Regularly $19.99. While you're at Radio Shack, cast your vote for your favorite NFL All-Stars. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. And now the end is near, and so I face the final bidding. From A to Z, from there to here, I shop the world all while I'm sitting. Brand new and collectibles, thank you. On the information superhighway, you'll save more and find things like this when you do it. Someone asked me once if I had my shirt special made. I told them I got mine like everybody else at Tractor Supply. The Wrangler jeans, Carhartt coats and workwear, Walls coveralls, plus clothes for the whole family. There's just no place that fits my life better than Tractor Supply. Heck, it's even where I go to get socks. Tractor Supply, for one acre or a thousand, will help you get the job done. Matt Weiner back in our college football studio. Ohio State needed overtime to get out of Illinois. Fourth and eight for the Illini, down by seven. John Coop, Future's pass is batted down, and that's it. Ohio State wins yet again. Their fifth win this season by a touchdown or less. That is a school record. 23-16 is the final. Other games of BCS import. Texas loses at Texas Tech. 
career day for Cliff Kingsbury. Six touchdown passes, 473 yards passing. Florida State leading the ACC and taking on North Carolina. Adrian McPherson and Quan Bolden, they hooked up three different times on the day. And Florida State remains unbeaten in the ACC. They're in the driver's seat as far as the conference's BCS bid goes. 40 to 14 is the final there. Meanwhile, Georgia at Auburn. Tough game come from behind win for the Bulldogs 24-21. David Green 232 and a touchdown and an interception as well. Ronnie Brown's 125 yards and a touchdown. Not enough to get the Tigers over the hump. And Georgia going to the SEC championship game for the first time ever. Iowa finishes off a perfect Big Ten season for the first time since 1922. Get their first 11-win season in school history. 45-21 over Minnesota. They get the uh, Floyd of Rosedale bronze pig as their trophy. Brad Banks, 100 yards passing, four touchdowns, two on the ground. Michigan beats Wisconsin 21-14. They're next up for Ohio State. Chris Perry with a career-high 175 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Anthony Davis, 154, and a score in a losing effort for the Badgers. And also Oklahoma coming off their first loss of the season. Easy winner over Baylor. Kevin Steele's final home game as the Baylor head coach. He has been fired. We'll finish off. After Baylor finishes off, Quentin Griffin, 152 yards rushing on 17 carries. He had four touchdowns. Now back to Clemson with Jeff and Todd. Guys. And here Maryland is leading Clemson, and the injured football player is Todd McClinton. For the Tigers, and they are... Well, when we've looked at the replay, <clears throat> again, obviously it's serious, but it doesn't appear to be. Watch right, right here. As he comes over the top, he's going to flip a little bit. And then as he flips, I, I think my guess is, is that he lands on his neck. Watch as he flips. There he is right there. He lands on his neck. It, it, it seems somewhat innocuous. Watch it again. Watch it again. There he is right there. He lands on the top of his neck and then rolls over the top right here. Right here. And right there, you can see he goes to his stomach. Now, I, 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 I'm loath to speculate. I don't want to do that now that he's being strapped in. But uh... McClinton is out of Columbia, South Carolina, a junior, 295 pounder, 6'6. Six, six. Well, we hope that all of the machinations down here are of a precautionary nature. So many times we see this now in college football, and hopefully it's just they're taking absolutely no chances. Because as we watched him earlier when he was on his stomach, we saw his legs moving as he was tapping his toe. It seems to me, and I'm curious your vantage point on this, professional, college, everything else. I, I noticed that when I look in the paper on Fridays and they list the injury reports, they seem lengthier. You know, the bigger, stronger, faster, that, that's all part of it, but... Seasons are longer, too. And the seasons are longer, yes, no doubt. All of those are contributing factors. I mean, most of these teams have been practicing since July. That's right. And that's right. And, in fact, we, I remember when you and I were up at Colorado State, we made the comment that Sonny Lubick's season had started. Their first game was August 22nd. And now you've got teams that have 12, 13 games on the schedule. And, of course, you could be a 12 or 13 game team and be in a conference where there's a conference playoff like the SEC, you know, or the Big 12, where you could be playing as many as 15 games in a year. And, you know, that, as you say, that fatigue could be a contributing factor. And Maryland's got uh, a couple of football games left. They've got Virginia, which will be on ESPN2 next week. And then... To close it out on the great forest and give the applause for Todd McClinton. They're being very, very careful with McClinton. Let's go to Matt Weiner in our studio, Matt. Uh, Jeff, you guys mentioned the SEC title game. Georgia is headed there for the first time since its inception. 
David Green, Mike Johnson in the end zone. That's your game winner. And Georgia wins on the road at Auburn 24-21. And they clinch the SEC East title. They're 10-1, 7-1 in the SEC. Penn State, record-setting performance from Larry Johnson today. 327 yards rushing, four touchdowns. Sets a new school record for seasoned rushing yards and breaks his own single game rushing yards record for the third time this season. Florida, big winner, 28 to 7. They're not going to the SEC title game by virtue of Georgia's win, but they do get a 28 7 win. Rex Grossman was hot, 23 of 35 and four touchdowns on the day. Get you updated on Alabama and LSU over on ESPN. Still 6-0 in the defensive battle as they approach halftime. Santonio Beard has the lone score in this one. Short touchdown run. Bama failed on the PAT and lead it 6-0 at LSU. Guys? Okay, Matt, thank you. Maryland 23, Clemson 12. Terrapins have had the ball for over five minutes. This will be the 12th play of the drive coming up. 10 rushes, 61 yards, one pass. This is third and goal from the three-yard line. McBrien on the option, will keep the football. Try to get into the end zone, touchdown. Scott McBrien in for six to cap a wonderful drive for the Terrapins. Well, it seems only appropriate because clearly he has been the star of the game, throwing and running the ball. You know, it would seem only logical the number seven is the one that takes it across the line. We talked about earlier in the drive that they hadn't necessarily used much of the option. But there they go weak side, go against the grain as it were, instead of going full side. Brian able to find a gap and go in for the score. He transferred from West Virginia just before the start of the 2001 season as we look at Nick Novak for the point after attempt. And it is up and it is good. A little shaky there. But nonetheless, he gets it. So another look at McBrien as we go to commercial. Maryland has extended its lead on Clemson here in South Carolina. Hi, I'm Emmett. And I'm not. We may not look it. But we're a lot alike. We both like giving back to the community. And we're both considered quite stylish. And we both believe that phone service should be simple. Oh, yeah, like 10, 10, 220. It's cheap whether you use it a little or a lot. 99 cents for all calls up to 20 minutes. And there are no monthly commitments. So you only pay for the calls you make. So, what do you think of the shirt? Too loud. What do you think of the shirt? Dial 10, 10, 220. You're not ordinary. You're not average. You're something special. There's only one place to go to find the best values on furniture for every room in your home. Come to Value City Furniture to see our incredible selection. You can cozy up in this luxurious sofa and love seat for just $699. For a limited time, when you buy both, you get the matching recliner free. And look at this great oak wall bed for just $569. You save over 35%. High quality, low prices, great values. Value City Furniture. You just can't do any better. I'm a network validation engineer. I am a CAD designer. I am the supervisor of a technology-based networking company. We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. To find out more, call 1-800-823-6314. Get an education that can help you reach your goals. ITT Tech has information on financial aid programs for those who qualify. Call 1-800-823-6314 today. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday Night. Brought to you by 1010-220. Dial it and all calls up to 20 minutes are 99 cents. And by Bank of America. We are black back here at Clemson, South Carolina. I'm watching the rain coming down. And a lot of the folks are being chased out of the stands as it's coming down a little more intense, Todd. Time well, I think, you know, it's uh, just been astonishing here, this particular drive. 536, 12 plays, 64 yards, all on the ground. Once again, the offensive line for Maryland doing a great job. And here is the kick by Barnard, and Justin Miller will bring it out. And a penalty marker goes flying at the 32-yard line. As Miller is pushed back, it's a 25-yard return. And we'll see what the penalty is all about. Leon Joe is there on special teams.
Coming up next, Sports Center, Rich Eisen and Kevin Frazier are anchoring tonight. Buckeyes and that overtime drama to stay unbeaten. Also, Texas and Texas Tech. Great football game. Uh, the Mavs trying to make it 10-0, trying to make Mark Cuban the happiest owner in all the professional sports. Oh, that's great. Ahead. So they can refer to him as <laughs> Mr. November? What? <laughs> It is a long season. Kind of like remember the old thing with the Yankees and Dave Winfield. Remember he was Mr. May. <laughs> Not high praise necessarily. First and ten from the 18 for Clemson. Across the middle, it's too tall. Almost intercepted. J.J. McKelvey was the target, and Madhu Williams on the coverage. Let's go to Stacey Bates downstairs. Stacey. Guys, here's the latest on Todd McClinton. They are taking him to the hospital right now. They're predetermining it a sprained neck, but they're going to do some further investigation on that, going to give him x-rays this evening. He was moving. That's the good news, but they're going to keep an eye on that sprained neck. Always a tough injury to look at. All right, Stacey. We, we saw his hands and we saw his feet moving as, as he was uh, being carted to the locker room. Whitehurst on the throw, and Yusef Kelly makes the grab and advances the football to the 25. It's a gain of seven yards, maybe the 26. Number 45, On the tackle Merriman is Shawnee Merriman. Now in the hurry-up mode. And that time of possession, that's, that's significance. Uh, it just is. You know, sometimes they say that's an overrated stat, not tonight. You can't, you can't score if you're not on the field offensively. Third and three from the 25. Shotgun formation for Charlie Whitehurst. And across the middle, it is bouncing off of Arise Curry. Well, down 18 points. Well, then again, that's what I get for speaking too soon. Curry needed to cradle the ball. Again, this, we talked about his speed, but... The hands have not cut up to the speed. At least they didn't on that play. This will be the seventh punt tonight for Wynn Kopp. <laughs> Kopp at his 10-yard line. He has averaged 34.7 per punt this evening in the rain. This totally fearless suitor, too. Boy, I, he impresses the heck out of me. Tough guy. No fair catches. And here is the punt. High wobbly spiral, and Suter fields it. There are one, two penalty markers that go flying as he is tackled at the 25-yard line. A 43-yard punt and a loss of eight yards. Well, it's going to be a clip. They got a hit in the back, but Jamal Fudge, I'm impressed by his cover skills coming down as the gunner. How many times do you ever see Suter get dr dropped right in his tracks? You don't see it. it certainly hasn't happened tonight. An AFC battle for survival and a chance for Raider redemption as Rich Gannon, Jerry Rice, and the league's most potent offense squares off against Tom Brady and the defending Super Bowl champions, Raiders and Patriots, tomorrow on Sunday Night Football, also available on ESPN Deportes. And it all starts with NFL Primetime brought to you by Miller Lite at 7.30. You know what? I've looked at this play now a couple of times, and you know what? I, here's what I think, you know? I've, I've really come to the conclusion, it's a fumble! It's a fumble! It's a fumble then, it's a fumble now, it'll be a fumble in perpetuity, for goodness sake. I never thought of you as an Al Davis lackey. I just never, I never saw you that way. No, I, I, but then again, you know, you, you made the address earlier, you talked about, am I in favor of instant replay? Well, clearly in that case, it didn't work. He comes off the field, 70,000 people are in the stands, they showed on the Jumbotron, nobody groans, everybody accepts the fact that it's a fumble. And then miraculously, some arcane rule, they go by the letter the law, and you and I both know Romans 7 and 6 makes reference to the spirit of law, <laughs> not the letter of the law. They made a mistake. The so Raiders, the Raiders can cry out, he was wrong. You're saying the Lombardi Trophy ought to have an asterisk in New England. <laughs> First and 10 from the 22-yard line, and the handoff straight up the middle. It's Chris down. Let's go to Matt Weiner after game of one. Hi, Jeff. Halftime in Death Valley, and Bama snuck one in just before that. Tyler Watts, the keeper, the two-point conversion is good. Touchdown caps off a 96-yard drive, 14-0 tie. Roll tie. Tyler Watts is playing some good football. You know what? I should make an addendum to that. Even though, I, you know, I, I overreacted there. No, I didn't. I didn't overreact. Forget <laughs> it. But the point is, is that don't forget, one of the most clutch kicks I've ever seen in my life, and you'd have to go all the way back to Pat Summerall's kick against the Browns in the snow, that 50-some yarder. That 45-yard kick by Vin Terry in the snow, I didn't think he had Amazing. any shot. Any shot at all. And the wind in his face, he pumped it through. 
Ball at the 24-yard line, and the handoff straight ahead. Very close. Yes, it is enough for a first down. Chris Downs has picked up nine yards, and the stop by Brandon Jamison. And by the way, last week, Vinatieri kicked one from 57 yards. He's got a leg. He also runs the 40 and 4-6. I don't know if you knew that. No, he does. Seriously. Someone, David Letterman, one night, who was kicking from building to building, and he's doing a pretty effective job of that. I mean, that. That guy's an amazing, amazing kicker. I'm trying to remember who it was, and maybe you'll remember. Maybe he ran some. I think it was Herschel Walker. Ran him down. Remember, he was behind him and tackled him on a kickoff return. I think it was. I think it was Herschel Walker. Patriots and, and Cowboys. Of course, Herschel been in the league ten years. And he, he, he <laughs> made a difference. Receivers right and left. And again is the downs again, and he has a little bit of running room, but closing in a hurry is Eric Meekins, tackle number six for the free safety from Easley, Great South the Carolina. 50th Four rush of the game for Maryland, more than Eric two to Meekins one in terms of run to pass, and they've been do able to do that because their offensive line, we need to mention here, C.J. Brooks, Todd Weick, Lamar Bryant, Matt Crawford, Jeff Dugan, Derek Miller, the tight ends, and Eric Dumas, Stefan Heyer. Boy, they have been tremendous up front. A Maryland win tonight. They will become the first Maryland team since 1978 when Jerry Claiborne's team won eight in a row. Fourth longest streak in Division One. Well, I saw that you just mentioned that. I, I, I interviewed with Jonathan just before the game. One of the radio voices from Maryland. And the handoff right side is down. Well, wrapped up by John Leak after a gain of four yards. Of course, when you referred to me as that former tight end, Ted Christensen, I didn't appreciate <laughs> it. But, oh, well, you know, those things happen. And, and Ted, you would know this. You played. <laughs> <laughs> and, then he, and then he corrects himself by saying, oh, I'm sorry, Tom. Oh, that's great. Oh, man. You know that notoriety is dwindling when that happens. Well, maybe he was more of an NFC fan. Look at the plus side. Something to Washington think, is, you know, something to think about here. Downs with another 26 yards would go over 1,000 yards for the season. Third and one. High formation for McBrien. And again, this is the fullback plowing ahead and into Clemson territory down to the 47-yard line, a gain of 10. James Lynch tackled by Eric Meekins. Well, you want to, I, don't know, I, I don't know if you say tackle. I think that's referred to as riding time. <laughs> you know how in wrestling they give you riding time? I mean real wrestling, not that fake stuff. At 270 pounds, put Meekins on his back and said, well, you know what, I'll go down, but I'm going to get the first down first. And that's exactly what happened for number five. Robert Dan Abel stuff, right? Very good. 20th Very good. first down of the night. The one wrestler in your life that you know. <laughs> Bill Goldberg. I, I know Bill Goldberg. Bill Goldberg. That's, that's, that's choreography. That's not wrestling. I'll let you tell him. <laughs> there is the handoff. And not much there as Clemson wraps him up. Chris Downs. Brandon Jamison is there for Clemson. Take a look at the ACC standings. Florida State at top. Well, of course, because Florida State defeated Maryland, that's really kind of a two-game lead there. And Florida State more than likely will be able to hang on to their lead. But... Again, you pointed out at 9-2, Maryland at 9-2, is there any way that when they are 1-2 at the beginning of the season as poorly as they played? Remember against Notre Dame? Oh. Didn't even score a point. 22 zip. And then Florida State whacked them, what, 37-10, something like that? Yeah, that's a great testament to what kind of job Freegen does and what kind of players he has. Well, both they're young. Yeah, and his assistant said to us, hey, this famous line, go ahead, join in with me. You play the games one game at, at a time. time. Yeah. Works for them. Second and nine with the ball at the 47-yard line of Clemson. Downs. Turning it to the outside, and Downs takes a hit. Oh, my. At about the 31-yard line by Justin Miller. He's had two interceptions tonight and maybe the most memorable tackle. Well, that's a memorable tackle, all right, but I, I don't know about it. I, I, don't know, I don't know the wisdom of celebrating when you're down 18 points. Here's Downs. He doesn't see from the left oh. of, of his side. Here comes Miller just separating him from the ball. Maryland comes up with that's Latrez Harrison who makes the recovery. Watch the top. He's going to come off the block. And, of course, right here he's looking downfield. Can't see it. Bam! The ball comes up. Latrez Harrison and Derek Fenner kind of share the recovery there. And yeah, the injured player is Downs. A vicious hit. That, well, you know what? Those are the kind that hurt, and I, I can tell you from personal experience. You're running down, and you're looking the other way, and for all intents and purposes, you think everything's coming from the one side. He thinks it's coming from the left. Now from the right, bam! Ouch. Man, it, it, it's a sh it, it shocks your system. Honestly, and that kind of hit, his insides moved. 
is in sides moved. I'll never forget taking a hit like that and actually having to crawl off the field. And Cedric Hardman, if you remember Cedric <laughs> sure. Hardman, that great defensive end comes over to me and he screams at me and says, get up, boy, get up. And I said, Cedric, I just can't. Now, some coaches came onto the field, and I think they Very screamed something flag. at the official. We might get an unsportsmanlike conduct here. Maryland rushing this quarter. They've had 18 carries for 115 yards. Let's get the call. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. Penalties offset. Well, now we mentioned that coming into the game that Downs needed 106 yards to go over 1,000. He had 894 coming into this game. Now he's at 101. He's five yards short. But judging by his reaction to that hit, I don't know if we'll see him anymore tonight. I'm always amazed by players that aren't that big. In the case of Justin Miller, 180 pounds, 5'11", who can generate so much violence. I mean, there have been a lot of players. You know, I, I, I think about players for the Raiders. Uh, Jack Tatum, who generated a lot of violence. He's a small man. I mean, meeting no, no, him. No, no, he wasn't a small man. But, but, he was 5'10", but, but and he was about 205 pounds. But not a large guy. I mean, not, not a really huge football player in the sense that these guys who are a little smaller in stature generate a lot of violence. Let me explain it to you. It's an handicap cartoon. It's the cartoon where the guy's walking away. He's got a black guy, and he's got the crap kicked out of him. He says, I know he only came up to my chin, but he came up too often. <laughs> <laughs> that good. was Jack Tatum, and tonight it's been Justin Miller. Yeah. If there is, you know what, if there has been a bright spot for Clemson tonight, it's the field goal kicking of Aaron Hunt and the play of Justin Miller. Absolutely. From the 27-yard line for the Terrapins. On top, 30 to 12. Josh Allen now at running back, replacing Chris Downs. And the give is to Bernie Fiddler. And Fiddler picks up uh, about three yards. And a reminder, coming up next with Rich Eisen and Kevin Frazier, the Buckeyes, the overtime drama. Texas and Texas Tech, great football game. And the NBA Mavericks. I thought it interesting. Trying to stay perfect. I was about to say, I thought it was interesting with our game day crew. They did a little bit of a feature on Cliff Kingsbury. You know, the numbers that he's putting up down in Lubbock. And, oh, poor him. You know, he's not going to get any attention. Well, I, I think with the big upset over the Longhorns today, that guy will get a little more national attention. But Maryland has done this quarter. Man. From the 24-yard line, second down. And straight up the middle is Josh Allen. From Blandenburg, Maryland, the freshman, a gain of five. John Leak is there. Now, Josh Allen's got to be thinking to himself, you know what? I know with the Perry Downs thing, this is great. And I know I'm only a freshman. Did you know coming into this game, 378 yards and eight touchdowns, averaging seven yards a carry, and he can't get any playing time until garbage time. But they really like this freshman. They think he's got a chance to be great. Maryland getting set to go to nine and two, eight in a row. Five and one in the ACC. Virginia, that will be on ESPN2 next week. We're going to close it out with Wake. From the 20-yard line on third down. And of defense wraps up Josh Allen. Nothing there. Leroy Hill making the stop. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN2, Avon Coburn and the Mountaineers face Lee Suggs at the 13th ranked Hokies live from Blacksburg. Then on Thursday night at 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN, the Pittsburgh Panthers ended Virginia Tech's perfect season and now they look to repeat that feat against the number one ranked Miami Hurricanes. That on College Football Thursday brought to you by Circuit City. Thought it was interesting. Downs went into the game, and Josh Allen said, what are you talking about? Get out. <laughs> Inside of 20 seconds left in the ball game. Fourth down and four from the 21. And here is the handoff. Open up the middle and losing the football, but Maryland scoops it up. Latrez Harrison picks up the fumble. Touchdown, Maryland, with seven seconds left in the ball game. And when it rains, well, I, it pours. Well, they, they, as advanced, we're watching the they water advanced, come down. They can't advance the fumble, so the ball will have to be placed at the one-yard line. And that's the very reason Allen didn't want to be taken. I says, "What are you talking about? I want my moment in the sun on fourth down. You've had plenty downs. You went over 100 yards. Moment in the rain tonight, as it's falling oh, okay. again. Oh, oh, all right, Mr. Meteorologist. <laughs> <laughs> Here, look at my Doppler. Tough, yeah, tough, tough partner tonight. Gosh. <laughs> 
man, I'm there. I, you know, you, know I, you started it with the Starsky and Hutch question. No, 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 no. I, right. no I, I have to think, uh, McCartney, what was I thinking? <laughs> what decade was Fort I down in? Fum Fourth down fumble rules in effect. Ball was fumbled at the five yard line, picked up at the one. Be right here, first down. Okay. So it was seven seconds left. And Ralph Regan can be secure and the thought that for the first time in 17 years and the once, Maryland Terrapins have a victory and once here. again that's Justin Miller who's the one that causes the fumble Boy, what a football player he is just a freshman so the final play of the ball game here in the upstate Clemson South Carolina tonight Maryland has won the football game tonight. 30 to 12. They have defeated the Tigers. That's our final score tonight. Coming up next is Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Todd Christensen, Stacey Pates, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Jeff Hollinger. For some reason, stats of the game, log on to ESPN.com. If your Bank of America credit or check card is ever stolen and used fraudulently for a cent and will replace your loss,